blind submissions, where DIY bands submit songs for us to listen and react to blind. Every week, we'll bring a guest from the underground music, arts, or entertainment scene to help you sort through mountains of new music. We go in blind, so you don't have to. Blind submissions. Uh, good morning, everybody, as we record on another early Saturday morning. Oh, wait. Oh, it's Monday. It's Monday. Hey, happy, happy, <laughs> happy Monday, Monday, everybody. Uh, good welcome morning. Back. Good evening. Good night. Yes. Welcome back to another episode of Blind Submission. Well, if you're gonna go with if you're gonna go with pitch, then I need to match it, or it's gonna, well, it's gonna sound terrible no matter. Did, what. I, go with, did I go with pitch? Yeah, you. Yeah, you, you <laughs> did I? Did I? Did, yeah. You created a melody. Let's do that. Yeah, I can't sing. I don't know if anyone's noticed that yet. Um, <laughs> I, never been a singer. No, no. We do have. A singer as a guest today, although Ooh. I don't know if that's what he's currently best known yeah. for. But uh, it, but it is truth and actually something I want to ask him about. Who are we talking to today? <gasps> Since you were the agenda preparer, I was of the, the day. agenda preparer of the day. Uh, today our guest is uh, JJ Kozan from the Obelisk. The Obelisk. The Obelisk is probably one of sort of the premier heavy underground music uh, sites on the internet. Um, yeah, you know they. They premiere a lot of bands, you know, a lot of bands send them. Everybody wants to get on the obelisk. <laughs> what, what's crazy about JJ, and I've, you know, worked with him on releases for Kook and for Glory or Death, is um, he responds to everyone, I swear to God. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, it really is a one-man operation, one-person operation. He, he was uh, writing at another publication, another metal publication that shut down in, like, I think he started the obelisk in 2009. And uh, he just decided to go it on his own, and it's not his job. Um, it's not you know, it's not his primary source of income. But I mean, I swear he works a full time job. That's crazy. Worth of hours on the obelisk. And he actually responds to everybody. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, I've never heard anyone say, "Yeah, I reached out to JJ, and I, you know, he didn't get back to me." Wow, that's it's, usually what you hear. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's not immediate. You know, yeah. it's, it's same with like when we interviewed Billy Goat. It's like Billy. I think Billy responds to everyone. It might take him some time, but he'll wow. he'll get there. That's cool. I mean, even I have a autoresponder set up on our email. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's I know. hard, man. I know. It makes me feel a little bit. I know. I feel kind of shitty about it, but. Uh. Um, uh, yeah. And then uh, now he's, you know, gotten into um, doing some programming and, you know, right, doing write ups for. He did an exclusive series of articles on Roadburn um, for, I think, Invisible Oranges. Uh, and he's, you know, gotten to be friendly with Walter who, you know, who is the founder of the Roadburn Festival and doing some work on programming and, you know, exclusive, some exclusive stuff. Nice. Um, I think he was set to be pretty heavily involved in last year's Roadburn, which I'm sure that we'll, didn't happen. We'll cry <laughs> together and talk about missed shows and stuff. Um, but like I said, he was also a singer, uh, in, you know, some, uh, stoner, doom, whatever bands, Makes sense. four or five bands. Um, yeah. and, uh, I think it's been a while. So I'm, I'm curious, like what the, what and is where it? is he located? I mean, we could ask him this. He's in the Northeast. I think he's in New Jersey. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but you know, he, I think he would spend some time in Boston. So he's, in, you know, nor, a, a North, a Nor'easter. Nor'easter. Is that what they call it? I, maybe. <laughs> I know <laughs> that's do. what they refer to the storms as. And, and here's the part where I do a Jersey accent and a Boston accent. Ooh. No. No, <laughs> not today. No, uh -uh. So, too early on a Saturday Monday morning. Yeah, on a, on a Saturday Monday <laughs> for that kind of bullshit. Um, oh, hey, uh, one <gasps> one quick correction. So um, oh. when we were listening to Jerry's Soul Seller song, oh yeah, I said he's in a, um, a, a helicopters tribute band. Yeah, um, no. Soul Seller is the helicopters tribute band. Oh, which is why Soul Seller <laughs> sounds like helicopters. Yeah. Okay, Nightcrawl <laughs> the, the Nightcrawlers is a different band. So what he sent us was actually a helicopters cover. No, I don't think so. I think those are originals. So oh, okay. I think they're working on originals too. Oh, all right. And, and I think they mix it up a little bit, but they can go out and bang out a show as a helicopters tribute. Gotcha, gotcha. Not that anyone's doing anything all right. like that. Recently. Well, then that's good that we noticed that that we heard that. <laughs> well, not we, you. I, and I terrorized him. I he post he posted something, and I was. Like, hey, we listened to your song this week. Nice. Period. Period. <laughs> no, no comment. <laughs> oh, that's me. He, he said, "What? How? What did you think?" Got to tune in. And then he said, "There's they got twelve. I think he said they have twelve songs recorded." Damn. So, nice. Busy, busy, busy man. All right. All right. Well, 
that's enough. I Should don't, we bring uh, JJ in? Yeah, I don't have any other administrative items to I go don't. over. I mean, since the last time we recorded, last Monday. Last Monday. Or two days ago. Or two, whichever yeah. it was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough of our babble. I got nothing. Bullshit. Let, let us bring in the man and get started. And hopefully, maybe a little bird. <gasps> oh, there he is, there ladies we and gentlemen. Go. JJ from the Obelisk. How Hi, you doing, man. Where's I'm the bird? Good. I was just. I, it's, I, sorry. I, yeah, I'll bring the bird back. I was just uh, <laughs> definitely not answering email. While we... <laughs> no. That's funny. We were just talking we about. We were that. just talking about that. Oh, you, that you, that was you, what was happening. Yeah. Do you have to like? Like lock devices, all devices in a box. Oh, there's the bird. Thank goodness. Um, welcome. Yeah, back, no, bird. I um, I, I for some reason, for some odd reason, I can't uh, check my email on my phone. I have to oh. use webmail, oh. and through like through my browser, and I'm cool with that. And like I, so it, it's like a huge hassle for me to answer anything or do anything with it. So I, I, I basically don't answer email on my phone, and I'm, I'm good with that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that, that <laughs> seems. I, I am. Um, I scrubbed my work email from uh, my phone about two months ago, and boy, have mm. I been a happier human being. Yeah, like when I'm out running an errand, not obsessively checking work email. I should because I just don't check it. It's there. Yeah, but I don't check it on my uh, phone. I used to, and it would drive me nuts. Oh, that's so crazy. It was a quick, it was a quick fix. What does your, uh, you know, running the obelisk? What does your weekly email intake look like? I don't, don't know. even know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> Are we talking like thousands of emails a week, hundreds that you're receiving and responding to? I mean, it depends on the week too, right? Yeah. Because uh, yeah. you know, obviously, in summer, non-pandemic, I might get. 1500 emails a week or or like you know uh now might get 100 a day you know wow, wow. and but like I mean, uh, but I mean, you know not all of that requires an answer some of that's just press releases and stuff so yeah yeah i mean we've in the short time the six months we've been doing this the the email address for music submissions has already been added to a bunch of pr release lists and distribution lists so we just get we get a ton of already of unsolicited yeah. music submissions i can't imagine i mean I, i'll be honest with you i've never heard anyone when i've talked to them about you or the obelisk say oh yeah i, I reached out to jj but i didn't hear back you know i didn't hear back from him it seems mm -hmm. like you have a really a really great response rate i try um, i mean try. i mean there are, I, you know there are definitely people who reach out to me and never hear back and like I'm, I'm sorry you know i try um but i, I you know i i really i don't know because i've been on the other end of that i guess yeah. like trying to reach out to people and and it's super shitty when when you're trying to get in touch with someone or or you know and and publicists especially like publicists reach out reaches out to you they're they're waiting they just need a yes or a no yeah you know, and, and it doesn't really matter if it's yes or no. It's not like you're hurting your feelings, but so I've been on that end of things, and and I yeah I try really really hard, but there are definitely people I don't get back to. I can't. I, you just can't. Uh, One, yeah, I mean it is interesting that you've maintained the obelisk really as a as a solo operation since the since the beginning. I assume you intend to keep it that way on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. It's. <laughs> um, yeah, part of the reason I started it was because I was sort of burnt out on uh, dealing with a writing staff because um, I worked I worked in magazines before uh, and and had sta had staffs. I was an editor uh, and and dealt with a writing staff and and sort of managed that. In addition to managing like the um the content and like the, the the editorial end of what is actually going to be made managing the this ego of the writing staff and then managing having a publisher on top of that once the magazine i was working for when went under uh i was like Puh, that. <laughs> and just started the obelisk as like a word dump just a place to kind of write just to, yeah. just to because that's continually, 
that's all I really want to do is just, just sort just of right. and hang out with my bird friend here and hang out with. Uh, does he have a name? He, she, they? Uh, it? no, just bird, birdie. Way to put me on the spot. Man. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Right. Sorry. I, it's, um, it's like, that, damn it, the bird just came. It's, it's Tony Iommi, the bird. I Tony, I, it is, isn't it? Ooh, Tony, like is it Tony's birthday? I saw a lot yeah, of Tony think, uh, yesterday. I, I was or something. I don't know. Yeah, there Showed was a lot of Tony in my feed. Yeah, shows up on Instagram. It's like Happy birthday, Tony! I'm sure Tony Iommi. <laughs> oh yeah, he, hey he appreciates it. He loves it. I can use scrolling through his and stuff. <laughs> He's like, I'm feeling loved. Feeling loved. Oh, guys. oh this, this one really gets me. Someone, post, someone posted a picture of me from 1973. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was all worth it. It was all worth it. Uh, all worth it. He, he wouldn't, yeah. but you know who I love are some of these enigmatic boomer le musician legends who've actually grabbed onto social media um, and like use it well. Like, like, well, Robert Fripp is absolutely killing it with his with his wife doing these insane covers. Um, if you go yeah. find his YouTube channel, <laughs> find his really? YouTube channel. Yeah, What's, like, what is he covering? just all kinds of different music and his wife was like an artist and a musician and a dancer and it's always her in like a really tight shirt with no bra on so the, the like the prominent feature is her nipples uh -huh. like i mean on purpose i think this That's is Mrs. Fripps, sir. This <laughs> what they're going for Mrs. Fripps nipples. and Fripps then him, him like in a chair somewhere playing and singing a song and her saying it's very it's very funny i have to be it's been a very long who is robert fripp yeah uh, king crimson oh okay yeah. okay i watched robert fripp once in new york city at uh town hall which was like a theater do uh soundscapes and it's and and it's like robert fripp drone but more pretentious and <laughs> so he just did a set of like 40 minutes and then he and then he got on mic and did a q a because it wasn't self-indulgent enough just the <laughs> now we need to talk about it <laughs> just the drone is, is he had to talk about it and the, the questions he got were like the most amazing things i've ever heard it was like hey robert fripp why are you so awesome and innovative and he, was, <laughs> he was like just lucky <laughs> i just happened to be robert i was fripp. born with it or and maybe it's maybelline that's it i don't know that, turns out i'm a genius i don't know so he's pl he fully planted the audience with people to ask questions. <laughs> I don't even think he did. I think I think he Robert didn't have to. probably gets that wherever he goes. And right yeah. now, who's so great? That's funny. Yeah. So like my eighteen year old all of a sudden knows who Robert Fripp is and is like listening to King Crimson. And the other one is Brian May. Like apparently Brian May is a, a social media superstar. Now I'm gonna plead ignorance again. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, no, <laughs> don't. I know that one. <laughs> Oh Jesus! Uh, last episode was um f uh, we recorded was Francis from Old Man Wizard and King Gorm. Oh and, yeah, and yeah. Francis is dropping Mr. all. Roberts. Yes, dropping all of these references to these like dungeon synth projects and yeah, I believe and he's that. like, have you heard of and he name four bands and we're like, uh, uh no, nope. <laughs> no, no clue. He's, he's he's got some out there tastes. Yeah, he's he in. The Dread Crew of Oddwood. Yeah, yeah, dead, we yes. did talk about that at length. Pirate metal. Was, yes, pirate yeah. metal. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting stuff. He's, he's, a, he's a unique guy. I saw him play in a band called Leather Nun America circa 2011 or 2012 and was like, whoa, this guy, you know, he's he's singing harmonies with the dude across the stage and, and kind of wailing. I was like, this guy's, you know, he's nice, he's pretty solid. And, and <laughs> to, to this day, like, Anything, anything that dude is on is worth a listen, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, just what he does, the kind of weird proggy, just he just and just runs with it. You know, I've been perfectly happy to sit and watch him play Deep Purple songs on Facebook before, just like just jamming <laughs> on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You never, you, and now he's like putting a bunch of effort into YouTube and into his YouTube channel and trying to like build it into something. Yeah. And, uh, so you'll he's live streaming, posting videos about how to make dungeon synth. Um, you know, teaching guitar I lessons and start a dungeon synth. Project. How to dungeon synth? Yes, how that's to it. Dungeon. Yeah. I should do. I should do, do it. Do yeah. it. So, so uh, you, 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 I saw a r upcoming re-release of some music from a band that you were in at some point. Um, you, you have been a vocalist in multiple bands. Um, a few. A few. Uh, a few. A few. A few. <laughs> um, but you don't anymore. Is that true or no? 
I actually, um, the band you're talking about, I got a cough. Give me one second. I'll go for it. Cough away. I put myself on mute. Oh, look All at right. that. Skills. Yeah, pro shop. Got it. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So the band I was in that just went up on Bandcamp finally is called Megashira. That's uh, right. Yeah, that was it. And we did one record. We did most of a second record, but never really finished it. I recorded vocals and they sucked because um, mm -hmm. I'm not a very good singer, which is why I don't really do that at this point because I'm gotcha. not very good. And I'm, then I know it. So even worse, right? <laughs> um, so, but we did one record and uh, and a few splits and stuff and that just went up on Bandcamp. Um, our bassist, a guy named John Eager, love him dearly. Uh, he uh, he finally put that, put all that stuff on Bandcamp. It's just all free download. It's just every now and then somebody was like, hey, you used to be in a band, right? Similar to how you were just like, <laughs> yes, hey, you used yeah, to be in a band, right? Now I can say, oh yeah, it's on Bandcamp. Yeah. Go listen to it here. Yeah. It. So. That is one of the interesting things that, you know, Bandcamp is becoming, uh, we talk about Bandcamp all the time, um, mostly because- yeah. yeah, we you know, yeah. we we prefer people submit music via Bandcamp. We've been digging through the the um all the articles, all the kind of music write ups they're doing, scene exposure and mm -hmm. um and uh you know, one of the things about Bandcamp is it's becoming this place, this archive of yeah. music that doesn't isn't new. But yeah. But can ex can exist in the world and doesn't have to disappear anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then like uh, like Ass Chapel. Perfect. Do you know Do you know of the band Ass Chapel? First of all, believe it or not, I don't. Christian yeah. from Horrors turned us on to turned us on to Ass Chapel, and I think actually the guitar player is now playing guitar for like russian circles yeah. or for you know i, I think that was yeah i, I think, think he's russian playing circles. for russian circles um okay. so like a like a thrash death metal band from the south in the like mid 2000s maybe and um no one's heard of them outside of you know a few people christian obviously knew who they were but um they put all their music up on Bandcamp, and then they like did a double LP release because there was so much interest in yeah. the music, even though they're no longer a functioning band. It's one of the fucking greatest records I've ever heard, <laughs> and I had no idea they existed or it existed. Right. And now, and now, now that it can be you know out to the world, and especially when when you couple that with things like you throw your old music up on Bandcamp, it gets a surprising reaction. So then, oh, why not run one of those Bandcamp uh, vinyl campaigns? And if it generates enough interest, then you can have a record pressed and and record fulfillment, sell records at no cost to yourself just because that platform exists. <laughs> it's a it's a cool thing they're doing. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm not expecting a, a vinyl. <laughs> not expecting no. to put out a record. <laughs> vinyl worthy. Response. No, no. It was really just like so that the once or twice a year, I got asked about. It. I did recently do uh, a vocal track. I should mention for a band called circle of size mm. uh, out of LA and, you know, was back and forth with the guy who does the project who prefers to remain anonymous. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we, we wound up covering uh, a Joni Mitchell song. Huh. And it's like this dark doomy version of, of a Joni Mitchell song that I sang on. Um, and uh, I just saw the other day it's going to be on their next record, but he put it out as a single, I think, for last Bandcamp Friday. So Circle of Size. That was the first time I had been in a vo in a studio doing vocals in over a decade. Wow. So, oh. yeah, it was How did it feel? I'm still not good? that good. Still not still, that good? Still not that good. Did 10 years later, 11 years later. Still not. <laughs> did you ever enjoy the studio process? I have to imagine as a vocalist who's not – fully comfortable and there's a rant a couple episodes ago on the jordan olds episode where i where i where i <laughs> we ranted a bit about we no I, <laughs> I ranted a bit about the has the how vocalists in heavy music are hesitant to get training like you know mm -hmm. like the good the it's totally fine for a guitar player to take lessons and sit in his room 12 hours a day and play but you know, you you do the rounds at Psycho and talk to the singer in every every band, and maybe a couple of them have training. Maybe yeah. a, a quarter of them do warm ups before they perform. It's just like I don't know if it's discouraged or it's just not popular. But I wish more people would do it because I would. I love 
the, uh, the range of abilities that you can develop as a vocalist and, and everybody can improve. So, yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with that. I would have taken lessons, uh, yeah. just didn't really last long yeah. enough. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I took, um, actually as a Preston in the mid aughts, there was a, a vocal coach who was like, uh, Melissa something was her name. She was, yeah. he was like the extreme. She's metal still around. Vocal. I'm sure she is. Yeah. Uh, but I took a lesson with her as like a press thing, right? Mm. Like, uh, it was, it was like go and take a lesson. Oh, and write about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she was super cool. Uh, and, and, you know, I would love to, to do that because, you know, I enjoyed screaming my head off. Yeah. Um, yeah. but, uh, but you know, just money think, and time. And yeah. Money. Yeah. I think there's two, two women who are popular for that specifically like teaching it's about teaching people how to do safely do the extreme vocal yeah. techniques without damaging mm -hmm. your vocal cords but you, you might be interested to know then that um, one of them has an app that you can get on android or iphone called the art of screaming i believe yeah and that was her it, that's, yeah that's her, so that's it's her. it's like her full complement of lessons that you can buy as an as an app on the iPhone and and not have to do lessons with her. Watch the videos, do the do the practices right. do the and exercises. stuff like that. So trying to make well, it more more accessible. You'd be amazed. You'd be amazed. Nobody is banging my door down to do to, to sing. Vocals. Nobody. Oh <laughs> come on now. You but I mean you you have a big platform though. I mean uh, I, it's funny you have. You know, the 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 tastemaker crowd in this in particularly in the like stoner doom scene it's an interesting environment but uh you're you know there's maybe five or six people that if they post a link to music i'm gonna listen to it and you're you're one of them for thank sure you. thank um, you you ryan from pound uh you <laughs> You, Ryan from Pound. Actually, Leanne too. Usually, Leanne. Puts no, Leanne. Stuff. Yeah, Leanne knows what's up. Yeah, consistently. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, uh, I don't want to scratch at wounds, but um, one of the things that's been interesting is watching your, <laughs> watching you play with the bird, um, and watching your involvement in uh, Roadburn. So, I, I have a vague memory because I can't remember anything anymore, especially from twenty twenty. Especially from twenty twenty. That you had some. Sp special involvement in road burns uh for last year or you're going to be doing something i know you and walter have become friendly um I, yeah i'm i'm fortunate to call walter a friend yes um uh, were you picking were you picking lineups i i, I just I, I should have been smart enough to go back and find whatever article but <laughs> it's it's early no, on a saturday actually, for me <laughs> i love i love walter desperately walter is you know any day walter sends me a message is a good day as yeah. far as i'm um, or, or chat days. or whatever it is. Um, I have, I have over the years stopped suggesting bands to Walter because Walter has never, never once. <laughs> I love him. I love Walter, but that is true. Yeah. And I don't even know if he realizes it, but it's never happened. I think maybe three, three bands I sent his way. That's funny. That I thought would be, that I thought would be a good fit. And Nothing. now I just, now I just send him music. You were going to go last though. year, last year, um, for the last, the only thing I can think of that, um, you might be, you might be thinking about is the, the zine, uh, Roadburn publishes a daily, That's uh, it. a daily, uh, and I am, I've been the editor of that since it started or, you know, I, I, we've done it for, let's see, we've done it for seven years. I think last year would have been the eighth year, the eighth year. Mm kind of like a a pretend one and put it online and, and i think we're doing that again this year nice. uh but yeah that that's so yeah I, th I think of all the international festivals i think um road burns like the top of my list of the if i could just go to one in a, in a given year i think that's the one that i would want to try and you know find a way to get to yeah i um i started going in 2009 um and, wow. I've, and I've gone since uh i i don't think i would i would miss one uh, yeah. it, it kind of became like the center of my year um and and in a, in a way that last year when it didn't happen uh was very evident like to, yeah. to me you know on just like a, a an emotional, emotional level <laughs> kind of well-being level like, a, yeah. like how much 
of a spiritual recharge that that is. Mm-hmm. And you know, I've been I've been lucky to go to various festivals. I've done Psycho in 2018. And 2018 no it's just 2018 and i did and i've done desert fest in london a few times and hosts about in norway which i also love uh and and you know and i i have been lucky enough to do these things and of course last year last year i was going to go to denmark last year i was going to go to <laughs> germany last year uh, i was going to fucking shit and nothing, <laughs> none of it happened in yeah. addition to little burning none of it happened but uh you know i've been very lucky but world burn is kind of it is a, a singular kind of experience. And the thing I tell people, um, because a lot of people ask about it, is, is that road burn will change your life. Like mm-hmm. if you, it, you will, you, you will come back from your first road burn, a different person. Yeah. I'm, it, I'm ready for that. Let's it, do is, it. <laughs> it is that kind of experience. 2022. I know. Oh, <laughs> 22 <laughs> baby. Yeah. Hey, Psycho's Everybody, told- everybody's buying calendar just to market it. Yeah, Psycho's mm-hmm. still selling tickets for August in Las Vegas. Uh, it's yeah. not happening, man. Bless their hearts. I, yeah, you know, no. I have to think that that's not likely, but yeah. I also kind of have to think that if anyone's going to run a festival anyway, it might be those guys. In Vegas. In Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, Psycho is unique. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In terms of, of the product it's offering. Um, my goal last year was to go to Psycho Las Vegas and take a bunch of mushrooms and just do the full <laughs> the full experience. The full experience. Just go go to Psycho, trip out and write. And that was nice. and that was what I was gonna do. And hopefully, you know, something useful was gonna come out of it. But uh but of course gone. Right. And they yeah. were, you know, Psycho was on board too, is the you know, the dude who runs that event was like, yes do it <laughs> yes i'll provide the mushrooms I, I, won't, I won't say anything about that but there's I didn't good say that i didn't i didn't say that <laughs> nope nope that. jd said it. it i said it <laughs> oh on, bird. Yes. Yeah, Damn. Bird. i've heard stories oh and at the hard rock too when it was still there yeah that was his, pretty sweet <laughs> you could see his oh. balcony at the pool yep. when you were at the pool and you could see him up there like surveying the yep. you know surveying, surveying his domain everything that he could created <laughs> yeah i you know he, uh, it's an interesting event i had never quite experienced heavy music with that amount of spectacle yeah around it um or, or yeah like it was it was like if, if if a rock and roll show was also fireworks but also like i don't know violent fireworks like fireworks <laughs> <laughs> In your head, uh, it was Vi. That's a good, good band name, Violent Fire Fireworks. Fireworks. Yeah, we I were like the, we were both there in 2018. Also, oh, we were there in 17 and 18. Was that Bor- yeah. Boris on the main stage? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. Boris and on the main stage. What Black the st- Mare in the in the little room. Yeah, and Black Mare was in the little room. Boy, not yeah. outside. Oh, boy, got outside. Yeah, that was rad. <laughs> and D- Dune opened it. That's a, a band that I'm yep, glad Dune to see. Opening. They, they opened the main stage Yeah. after we saw them the year before in one of the smaller, uh, they mm-hmm. played in one of the smaller venues or outside. Oh. Yeah, because Evan manages them. So yeah. Oh, I didn't know if they played two years in a row. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Those guys, are, those guys, I think they're about to, about well, to become uh, the ocean. Yeah, they're, they're about to be. They're about to be a much bigger band than they were a year ago. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, of all the bands that I've seen at Psycho specifically, they're the one that I was like, this band's got like kind of a mastodon level potential. Yeah, uh, and that's not. I mean, that's hard to pull off. And you know, a, yeah, and, I mean, especially anyway, especially with a sound that's kind of post mastodon. Yep. You know? Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but there's you know there's no reason they won't continue to grow into their own thing. Uh, I think uh, another. another I haven't heard that record out. yet. What's that? I'm just making a dumb joke. Uh, <laughs> I said especially after the movie comes out. Oh, Dune. Yeah, I don't uh, think they got any work in that one. No. I wish. They should have. Soundtrack. It's, it's like it's Soundtrack. like my my endless sadness that no one ha- in all of this new fiction that's coming out, like uh, Lovecraft Country or. Um, the John Brown series on Showtime um, mm-hmm. that no one has figured out that maybe they should link up with with Zeal and Ardor and like 
maybe there's already a soundtrack to that kind of like postmodern analysis yeah. of American right. slavery than, than a guy who's just like writing records about it. That's <laughs> a- atmospheric. Yeah. Like perfect <laughs> musical bed for a show about slavery. But, uh, You're absolutely right. He's waiting for that call. I hope so. I hope he gets it sometime. Mm-hmm. Lovecraft Country would have been absolutely perfect to kind of have to shock between kind of the old timey period vibe and then kind of a, a modern sensibility to kind of flip back and forth between the two would be fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no argument. I actually didn't see that job. You didn't see it? No, oh, I think, I, it, I, think it... thing. No. I only I only watch like PBS News Hour, Star Trek, and uh, well, Tiger. Uh, okay, so love nice Lovecraft Country <laughs> is if a PBS News Hour show about uh, Jim Crow America and and uh, Star Trek crashed into each other so oh, i think you should, i'd probably i should probably check that out yeah, yeah. but with some mo- with monsters like yeah. all the monsters that, that eat the the red shirt they're all in lovecraft country. yeah <laughs> yeah so i should probably get on that exactly no it, it was really good that that and i and wandavision the the new marvel series oh yeah, yeah, Disney yeah plus those are my two favorite pieces of entertainment in the last year for sure Vid, you know video entertainment not music yeah, yeah. cool so you uh obviously you you know you run the obelisk you sing in bands but let's take a trip back in the way back machine oh um like what got you into music what buckle up you know (laughs) did you have did you were your parents into it did they listen to bands that you sort of catched on to caught on to no catched (laughs) communications professional here folks yeah (laughs) i do it for a living so i turn it off on the weekends Man, that was common. Um, yeah, no, I, it was just always kind of there. I mean, I think uh, my mom liked some bands. Um, my dad was was into like country music and and classical and like played that stuff. So there was music around, but none of it was like rocking. Yeah. Um, I kind of came. I like hit puberty as grunge hit. Uh, so I was like right right in there with like being misunderstood at the right time you oh know what yeah. I mean? yeah yeah um, totally yeah kurt's rage was a kind of rage that a lot of us that's it i was, I, yeah, I was that. yeah 15 16 years old and you're yeah. like yeah. <laughs> yeah that's it so um and i and i had an older sister my, i have an older sister and still have her um she was into she was into rock and roll and, and it was on the radio at that point so you know so you kind of find bands through that. And then it, I just never kind of, my taste got, in high school, my taste kind of grew into metal. And then later on, I found found heavy rock and roll. I was late on the whole thing. Like I was in high school in the 90s. I could have fucking gone to see Caius and didn't, um, you know, or sleep or whoever it was. But were you, know, were you in a town where that was possible, where those kinds nah, of bands were passing through? That. I, but I was used to used to traveling for shows. Mm. Anyway, you know anything I want to see. I live in Parsippany, New Jersey. Nobody's playing here. No. Uh, <laughs> how so, far is how far is that from where people are playing? I don't know. Uh, right. New Jersey. I can I can expect to travel at least forty five minutes to an hour for a show. Gotcha. Um, so you know, but that's nothing at the, to me at this point. But yeah, that's not uh, too bad. I mean, you know, if you don't know Bay Area geography. Um, you know, the Bay Area is really San Francisco, Oakland, and the rest of the East Bay and San Jose. We're the South part, and mm. it's forty-five. If there's a show in Oakland, it's forty-five minutes. If there's a show in San Francisco, it's forty-five minutes to an hour. I mean, so there that's pretty pretty normal for us too. And this, yeah. the scenes are stronger there than they are down here. Although we do get we do get shows occasionally and put and put them on ourselves. <laughs> most of the most wow. of the shows that we get them happen. Yeah, we put see, them on. That's, that's kinda why we started doing it. <laughs> I'm tired of driving to the city. Yeah. A, I should have uh, I should have started putting out shows in Persephone. It could have been, no, been on should. no don't. Been, yeah. No. If you feel like time stretched and stressed running the obelisks, don't even yeah. <laughs> that's it. what I need is is more thankless 
Uh, worse than thankless. Yeah. <laughs> like heaping abuse and loss of money. <laughs> and th- yeah. and thankless. If you got extra money to blow, <laughs> yeah. you want to pay bands to come play in your town. <laughs> but but friendship. But lots yeah. of friendship. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. At least you get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the people, the are, people are my friend when they're putting albums out. <laughs> oh yeah, every, everybody loves you when, when that's they that's have when it. that's when they're my friends. I will say your your write up of uh, on the second Kook record is still my absolute favorite. It's bonkers. The... Uh, well, it's a bonkers record. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're going for. Pretty, yeah, pretty I, much I... all the time. But you you sniffed out, I think, even things that I had to have a hard time explaining about it, which is not unusual because I'm too close to it to really yeah, of course, yeah, to, no. to figure it all out. But no, I was and it, and it's and it's mostly a fun read. It's like a it's a it's a wild ride. There's you know cr- some Hemingway <laughs> Hemingway esque dense sections of writing in there that are that are fun to untangle. It's I not, say, it, yeah, I kind of. Uh, you know, if I'm writing about a record and I can, if I, if I finish writing about a record and then manage to like say what I want to say, how I, how I want to say it. Mm-hmm. And, and if I can say it in a way that fits with the record. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's where I'm at. Yeah, uh, so thank you for saying that. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. And if yeah. you've never, if you've never read JJ's write-ups on records, it's not a standard record review. It's like, I feel like when you get to the end of the write-up, you have a sense of the feeling that you had listening to the record. So it's more of like an emotional description of of the music than it is like a technical or explanatory. It's like a, oh, that's how he felt after listening to it. I get it. I, I'd like to feel like that too. So I think I'll, I think I'll, I think I'll listen to this. I was on a I was on a panel once at CMJ, which is like the in yeah. New York is like the college music journal. Um, that used to be like the sort of pre-fest fest, right? Everybody would yeah. go to CMJ yep. and you'd see bands do showcases and yeah. Yep, exactly. Um, so I actually saw ISIS once at CMJ. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, wow. Um, but I was on this panel once and it was about, it was maybe a year or two after I graduated and I was working as an editor for a paper in Jersey and uh, called The Aquarian, loved The Aquarian. Um, and uh, and the, the one of the subjects was was sort of reviewing something as a you know from a standpoint, and it was and it was you know whether you're te- whether you're reviewing something and saying I like it or I don't like it. And I said you know if that's not what I want to do, like I want to, I'm way more interested in sort of describing the experience of the record. And I was like, you know, I was like 23, 24 years old saying this and that it was one of those things like you don't really realize you think it until you say it yeah and then you go, <laughs> and I was, yeah, that and is... I was like, oh shit i actually do feel that way <laughs> so one you know one of the things that that doing the obelisk has allowed me to do is sort of develop that that voice and that that method um i hadn't i hadn't reviewed an album like sit down a thousand words you know front to back a record uh which is a different mindset for me. Like, it's so fucking stupid how it's like, when I start a post with the album cover at the top, it's it's a completely different mindset for me than when I start with a band photo. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I hadn't reviewed an album with a with a with with the album art on top for like maybe a week and a half, two weeks. And I did this week with a, with a band called Savannah from Austria. Uh, yes, you remember. And... Uh, <laughs> and uh and and i got to sit down and like really sort of dig into it dig into it dig into it in a way that like i wasn't pressed for time even though i was and i wasn't like you know trying to get through it to get to the next thing kind of um got to really sort of live with it and it felt so good to just to just do that and and be able to sort of put myself in that in that sort of mental place and Mm -hmm. and live with the record and talk about the record like that it had been it had been a week and a half which is which was a long, a long time yeah so, so how, when you write a review of a record how many times do you listen to that is ideally it... six six oh wow six plus six if i can listen to something six times and then start to write about it i'm good oh yeah. wow yeah nice. i, mean, I think don't that... always get to do that i don't always get to do that yeah um, yeah but if there's something like 
there are records that I feel like uh, the standard I want to write to is just like you said, you know, the standard I want to write to is the person who made this record is going to at least be able to read it and say, I get, that. you know, or, yeah. or, or like I get where he's coming from or, or he understood this or something like that. Um, so, the, you know, so there are, there are records that like, I know that like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to post a review of this album and the person who made it is going to see it. Yeah. So, you know, so I got to make it make sense. So there are, there are records that I feel, you know, I feel some pressure because of that. Right. So I want to give some, I want to give that record it's due because maybe the person who, 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 who made it is going to see it. And it's worth expressing yourself clearly mm-hmm. when you're, when you're talking to that person. Yeah. And when, when you can consider... at least talking to that person can hear it, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, in that, you know, giving the the creation the gravity it deserves, which is kind of the opposite of what we do here at this at the podcast, where, where we listen to little snippets and make off the cuff remarks. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a different kind of a thing. Um, that is that you understand that when you're listening for your sixth time, the the band probably spent a year in rehearsals writing songs, and they probably spent weeks in a, a week in the studio meticulously tracking they probably i probably listened to mixes of our second record 200 times before we before we finalized everything and so and and if you don't understand that or give that you know what give that it's due then you're kind of missing the point a little bit i anytime any review that's got a score drives me nuts and honestly i i wish people would stop doing ranked lists if you want to do an end of the year uh, list, yeah. great. Do an end of the year list. Here's the 20 records that I, here's 20 records I loved. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a tough one. I do, I do rank your end lists. Yeah, um, I know. I, know, <laughs> I have, I, you know, no, that's fair. I have come to enjoy them less and less and less. And last yeah. year was the first year I was really like, this is fucking dumb. Yeah. Like, why am I even doing this? Yeah. Um, and I'll tell you the reason I do it. The reason I did it last year anyway uh, was, was you know, aside from, I want to call something album of the year. Low Rider was album of the year last year. For me, that, that album just defined that year. That's it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, even aside from that, you know, there was a certain amount of like, how urgent do I think it is that someone listens to this? Yeah. Now, okay. by the time you get past like, 15 maybe 20 records uh you're like you're still in top quality yeah as far as i'm concerned like i filled out a top 50 last year and i was and i was like number 35 shit that's a really good album yeah like you know so at a certain point is it is it worth assigning a number to it rather than just saying here's here's this shit go listen to it Maybe because someone's going to look at that list as a block and, and not right. As opposed to maybe they see something at number 17 and find something that really speaks to them and is their number five. Yeah. So yeah. for me, that's, a, it's just a way it, and I did, I went back and forth and like until I was putting the post together, um, it's, it's just a matter of organizing things for people to find them. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, as you a, know, and this isn't mm-hmm. a request for you, but um, but if when people are doing lists, I I like to see this stuff kind of grouped by, I don't know, like mood, like like what listening mood. You know, you could generically go by style or categories or subcategories or whatever, but that's expected, and then people will argue with your categorizations. But more like, you know, here's the five records I want to listen to while I'm driving by myself late at night. Like, here's the five here's the five records I listen to when I'm mowing the lawn. <laughs> you know, of, of of the best records. Here's the five records that I sit down with headphones and close my eyes and don't do another goddamn thing and listen to, or you know, something that's... more abstract like that. But then I don't I don't. I don't do lists. I don't do lists. So yeah, no, we'll have to, we're have gonna to do a list. Now. Shit, we're gonna have to now. Ooh, man. man, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I can, I see it. The like, urgency when the... point is a really good one. I hadn't really ever thought of it that yeah. way. Yeah, and I start that like when the doom charts come out. Every do they still do the doom charts? I haven't seen one for a while. 
I don't know. Um, but still- when those come out, like I always go to the first one. I'm like, okay, let's see the one that everybody thinks is the best. And I'm yeah. going to start at one and I'm going to work my way back. Yeah. I, I don't know. That whole NASCAR point system is, yeah. <laughs> is I mean, I, I, I get it. If you have multiple contributors, you got to, yeah. you know, you got to come up with a model for figuring out how to distill everybody's submissions. So I, I get it, but yeah. I don't know. I, don't really I usually, know yeah. How those guys work guys in the ladies. I don't know. It's like a ranked. Yeah. Basically, I think you're, you were asked to submit a certain number of records in order and then they assign point values based on the order in your list. Yeah. And they add up the points from all the contributors and that gives you your, so if everyone had the year end polls on my site. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like yours though, because it's, it's literally just type in it's, it, there's no options. It's just, and it's open to anything, which is, yeah. which is cool. And, um, I actually, I like it because I print all the lists at the end <laughs> and then like four or five years later, I go back and it's like something on that list that I should have been listening to at the time and, and completely missed that someone way cooler than me pointed out. <laughs> that's, that's someone funny. was on it. Not me. Oh. I won't say I didn't consider writing a bot to just submit my own band <laughs> over and over. <laughs> I'm kidding. There was a band. Write. Somebody's not, done it, right? Oh, yeah. Not in I remember. But in 2019, someone did it. And it was like, whatever. I don't even remember what the album of the year was. It was so long ago. But, um, yeah, they had like 179 votes for for their own band and they were somewhere they were somewhere in the top 10 and i was like you know what like if you care enough <laughs> about being get on 79 people <laughs> my rinky dink ass list that you had 179 people cast the vote for you or you know however many people cast 20 votes for you like i respect that yeah like because i'm not doing that you know i someone someone cares enough about it fine like you know i i said in the thing like these guys did this but i respect the hustle I, yeah you know that's fine well, I, I mean that's what, what's what we're all doing we're all hustling it's yeah not... I, that's it like you know whatever they could be on the list if, it, if they care that much <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly there there cool. are very few in this pool of underground bands who just like appear and then get pulled into something larger uh, most of it is a, is a relentless push from the band in in order oh, to yeah. to spread the word. You know there's yeah. there there's you know there's that's why long. that's why everybody's so old. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what, everybody. I got asked the other day. It was like, how come how come heavy rock is so old? Because heavy rock takes a long fucking time. Yeah, it <laughs> does. You know, oh well, I toured for ten years first, and I put out five records, and then someone decided they gave a shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, well, that's just how it is. Unless you're yeah. elder, in which case, elder just happened to be like 17 when they started touring. And then 10 years later. Yeah. <laughs> everyone got they blown up. I, I think that's one of the real strengths, though. Not to say that young people can't make good music because obviously they do. But when you're 16 and you attempt this, you become Greta Van Fleet because the world of your influences is very small. Your life experience is very small. Yeah. Your, your review of our record, you know, then the, all the nineties influences that you point out is because Carl and I and Eric and Troy were in bands in the nineties making that music, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the music that was there. And, and some of us were in bands in the eighties making music that would have had a home on, you know, headbangers ball or the sunset strip. Sunset and some strip. of us were in bands in the two thousands working on post metal and whatever. Yeah. So it, oh. it's all, it's not just there in my like here listening background. It's actually like stuff I've actively worked on. And so go. now, now we have the opportunity to smash it all together and, and make something new out of it, which is, I think that, yeah, no, I think that's, I think that's totally legit. I think, um, there's a lot of times that you know you can hear bands benefiting from the experience and and the diversity of influences that, that someone has amassed over time. I'm not yeah. advocating like no old dudes in rock. Like Jesus, look at yeah, me. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not what I'm. That's not what I'm pulling for. Um, but I do think it's interesting that that sort of the demographic of rock and roll has 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 aged. Yeah, um, and you know 
I'm sure, you know, there was a, a generational turnover like circa 20, 2010 to 2012. Um, and I think, you know, we're due uh, another, another one. And then a yeah. couple of years, I wouldn't be surprised if a few younger bands started coming along. I think you're already starting to see it. Yeah, um, yeah. Where you're going to get guys like Mon Lord, who are the statesmen, and and bands coming up. Kind of, you're already seeing it. Bands start to come up in in the wake, and it's just the next wave of bands. Everything is cyclical. Everything kind of turns and turns, and there's a creative uh, expansion and contraction. I, you know, that's just whatever. I'll be yeah. here. Yeah, and, and you know, having kids who are the age that I was when I started making music, and, and nephews and their friends and stuff watching, the kids that are in that get into heavy music for the most part are getting into it through variations of hip hop that involve mm -hmm. like a ghost main or a horror or you know stuff like that 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 mashes up hip hop and hardcore and metal all in in a. I think in a way more interesting way than the the Limp Bizkit version of that bullshit, mm -hmm. um, a, a way more creative, much less commercial way. Um, sure. That's that's really cool. And then so like my my nephew will only listen to hip hop, and then he's going to like hip hop slash hardcore shows, and then he texts me the other day about Mr. Bungle, and I was like, all right, we did it. <laughs> like, <laughs> this, your journey was not my journey, but we end, we ended up at the same the circle place. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's awesome. I, yeah. you know, I, I, my son is too young, um, and I, I haven't seen my oldest nephew in a while uh, because of the pandemic. But, um, you know, my my younger nephew, one of my younger nephews actually just called me this week and was like, I would like music. Take me, you're the guy, make me an MP3 player of music. And I was like, I kind of, I've been panicking because it's an <laughs> incredible sense of responsibility, right? Yep. Like, well, you know, this kid, not in a house where music is just playing. It's like, what am I going to, what am I going to give him that, that you know? Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting what? thought. Your nephew asks you for a, for ten songs that sort of paint the picture of heavy music. Well, first of all, he's getting ten records. Yeah, of 10. course. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, we, we listen to albums here too. <laughs> that's it. It's like yeah, it's like what do you? I, I don't know. Like, yeah, Abbey yeah, Road and David Bowie, or or do I give him like punk rock? Yeah. yeah yeah like what, what's his exposure what's his mainstream exposure like my my older daughter is a voracious consumer of music so i don't have to give her abbey road or or bowie but i think there's a level deeper that she could dig that she would like in music that she's kind of scratched the surface of that i could probably yeah. help her with so it's, so it kind of depends on what you know about what they're into and what they're yeah what no, their scope yeah, right. is. You know, it's I, funny too because the pressure used to be on back in the day when somebody would ask you for hey share some music with me like what are your favorite what's your favorite songs your favorite bands and you knew that you only had maybe 12 to 15 songs that you could put on a on a cassette <laughs> on the yeah. you know you had like so the pressure was on you yeah. needed to pick yes. the right 12 songs and now it's just like oh fuck like dig into this here's, you know? yeah. <laughs> like, here's, a, here's a eight hour spotify here's eight hours of, here's a yeah. spotify playlist yeah exactly yeah <laughs> eight hours 10 songs enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah enjoy the doom I, I, and more than more than giving the young people around me stuff to listen to, what I used to try to do was get it, bring them to shows. Because to mm -hmm. me, that's in in the, in heavy music. It's all I think it's the live experience is first to me, and then the recorded music comes next. Uh, for me, some people are out. Uh, Francis last week, he's like, I don't care. I don't care about going to shows. I prefer studio recorded music. Uh, I've uh, you know. I started playing bass because I got, you know, I started listening to Rush and then I really just listened to Exit Stage Left um, and All the World's a Stage on repeat. I love live, even live recordings over studio recordings. So I've always kind of been that way. But, you know, we took, JD and I took my 21 year old nephew, we'll say he was 21, um, to see Sleep play one of the three New Year's Eve shows they played in San Francisco. Um, oh, nice. A couple years ago and he's a hip-hop kid but he's also a stoner so, so i was like trust me and he remembers you know he remembers when he was a little kid and i would play a mastodon or wh whatever i was listening to and he was he was just like blown away 
You know what I mean? Because he just never experienced anything like like sleep in a 500 cap venue. You yeah. know, with with 45 amps and you know, <laughs> and, a, and a green smoke cloud. It was like it was a, a pretty cool experience for him, I think. I believe that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah. I uh, I don't know if I could get these kids out to show. <laughs> yeah. But it would be nice. You know, it would be nice to not go by myself. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. Well, you, you know, I think the what worked for me was that when they were young and they wanted to go see shows that I of artists that I didn't like or didn't care about, I went, I, t- I took them anyways, because I think first is just to say like, go see live music. I don't care. Yeah. You know, I don't care if it's the Jonas brothers or Katy Perry or, or the wiggles, all of which I have been to live, <laughs> um, you know, it's like, it's live music. And then, so then, and then there's a little back and forth cause they know in the back of their heads, I went and saw the Jonas brothers when you were six so you <laughs> now so you can come so maybe you can so now come see, yeah yeah right. took you to see yeah we, yeah. we we did take our <laughs> kids to see fucking dan tdm who's a youtuber and an aspiring musician and he we had to sit through his goddamn music it was interesting oh that was a weird that show. was weird <laughs> that was interesting him and his little dog but then that turned into me taking uh what five fifth graders to see ghost at their request which wow. which was fan- which was fantastic and we all had a blast yeah what was uh out of curiosity what was your first concert do you remember first concert i was really like at yeah yeah, yeah. that i recall like that you chose to go to oh um uh, lollapalooza 93 oh nice was, it was like my real that was a good one first exposure was... um so pool on the second stage yeah allison chains on the main stage uh yeah <laughs> rage against yeah. the machine played rage against uh, the machine played on the main stage too yeah, yeah, it, was a, yeah. it was pretty wild um, that was that was a great one i had i missed, I had our... I missed primus but other than that it was, it was a pretty fantastic thing yeah, by ninety three, I had already reached my grumpy old man. I hate, <laughs> I hate festivals stage. <laughs> festivals are too mainstream. Like, <laughs> I only go to I only go to you know I only go to Gilman Street and the Berkeley Square. I'm not. I don't need to. I already saw uh, uh, Rage Against the Machine play in the cafeteria at my college. I don't want, I don't want to go to a festival to see them. All of which was true, but doesn't make me any less of an asshole for right. asshole. for holding that opinion. <laughs> I was uh, I was eleven, so yeah. I wasn't wasn't hanging out in college cafeterias. Yeah, oh, yeah. no, point. no. I it, it, you guys reciting that line off lineup makes me think what a dick I was. Why didn't I? <laughs> why didn't I? It was but, so good. Well, the reason I didn't go see it is because around here I'm pretty sure it was at the Shoreline, and there is not a venue on earth I hate more than the Shoreline. Yeah, Shoreline Amphitheater. So, like, pretty much if it's at the Shoreline, I I wouldn't go. Yeah, you know? it was a. Uh, oh, in New Jersey, it was at Waterloo Village, uh, which is like a big open field, just, you know, not a concert place at all, not a venue, by sort of what it is, big open field park. Uh, and they had it, you know, set up and, and, you know, they brought in the water tanks and the guys selling marijuana seeds, which scandal, scandalized the living <laughs> And uh, enough that I remember it. And they had, all, you know, all, all this shit they just brought in for the day. And I remember... Arrested Development got on stage, and yeah. one of the many, many people in Arrested Development got on stage and was like, "What's up, New York?" And, was like, and the crowd was like, "No, no, <laughs> <laughs> nope, no, fucked up, Fuck out. yeah, fucked yeah." Up. <laughs> So, you're gonna regret this set. <laughs> it, was quite, it was quite a day. It was quite a day. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. That was, and then, and then the high school went to you know uh, venue around here. The sort of mid, mid-sized room was uh, the Birch Hill, and that had all the stuff that, um, you know, that came through like the Roadrunner record stuff, Echo Negative, you know, Vagony, uh, Fear Factory, all those bands. And I was, oh I yeah! Was, oh man! All those old Roadrunner bands. Yeah, and then sort of graduated from that as I graduated from high school into sort of more underground, various extreme metal stuff, mm-hmm. uh, and and heavy rock and roll and psychedelic and stuff and yeah <laughs> it's just 
and, yeah. and then after that, and then it's just a mess of like music sensory over there. Yeah. <laughs> it must be hard to like remember place for certain things. Some stuff I, I guarantee you stands out, but the volume of stuff you've listened to and seen can, I, I, for me, it's hard to remember. I'll switch years, switch locations. I'll conflate two shows. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, not to, not to oh, mention, yeah. not to mention I spent like all of my twenties drunk. I mean, just <laughs> <laughs> the lost decade. I mean, you know, it's like, wow, I really remember shows after, after 2012, much easier than before. It's like, I wonder why, because you fucking knew where you were, you know? <laughs> like, uh, so yeah, uh, that was, that's, that's a factor in that, but definitely, you know, mix up stuff. Did I see that band or did I interview that band or <laughs> did I just read an interview with it or, <laughs> that band? or yeah, no, totally. All that stuff. The recall yeah. is minimal. I find myself actually, one of the really good things about the obelisk is that now I have this archive of past shows that I've been to mm. that I can look back on and say, Holy shit, I saw that show. You know? Yeah. Um, that's, that's great to have the, the, the example of that where I wish I had more that comes up all the time is, and people listening have heard this too many times, but it's fine. Is a, is a, I had a, a memory of a show that I went to in like 92 in orange County. That was a Mr. Bungle Melvin's tour. That was this like legendary. In this story in again. It, it, the, <laughs> I'm sh just kidding. the short. Version. Have a shot, everybody. No. Um, <laughs> no. So it, it was this crazy show where Melvin's got booed off stage. Mr. Bungle, you know, basically told the crowd to fuck off and didn't do anything and then left. And uh, and I, over the years, I was like, did that really happen? Like, I have this really clear memory of it, and it's a story that I've told so many times that. I, I believe it happened, but I'm not, I'm start questioning myself. Did it really happen? And I just did a quick web search and found someone who was there who had written a full archive of it and then ended up interviewing Dale and Buzz for an unrelated thing and then asked them about the show and, yeah. and, and they corroborated it. And then we <laughs> recorded the record with Billy Anderson and Billy was the live engineer for that show. So oh, he shit. was... He was there. He, yeah, and he, oh, and he it comes had, full circle. And he absolutely was like, "Yeah, that that all went down, and and more went down, and like <laughs> filled out parts of the story that I missed because he was right. behind behind the scenes." The most gratifying part for me, because I don't like Slayer, was that it kicked off the night before when the same show played in L.A. And Tom Mariah was there backstage, and after the Melvins came off stage, he goes, "Hey man, you guys should really think about writing some songs that people would like." <laughs> <laughs> and Buzz was like, "Okay, fuck you." And then, and then the next night they played in Orange County and got booed off stage, and like everything just went off the rails. It's a good blog post if you want to find yeah. it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's pretty good. I'm not a huge Melvins guy, but uh, yeah, no, I get it. Well, no, I mean that that night. I I, I mean I had li been listening to the Melvins already, but they it was one of those shows where they came out with an attitude, and basically mm. just ten minutes of drone to open you know to open things up for a crowd, an Orange County crowd that was there because Mike Patton was the guy in Faith No More, so right. they thought they were going to see someone play Epic in a loop. Yeah. I, th <laughs> I think I think was the expectation, and what they got was. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and this weird I think Mike Patton still gets that element, though. Yeah. Right? Oh, I'm like, sure. I feel like people listen to like Tomahawk or one of his projects has a new record coming out, just put a song up or some shit. I bet there's still someone who's like, oh, I wonder if this sounds like Epic. And <laughs> no, no. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. I would say Tomahawk is probably the closest you're going to get to a Faith No More. Well, we got some new out of all of his projects. More. Yeah, we got some new Faith No More. Yeah, we got new Faith No More. That was. I don't know yeah. what that sounded like, though. I don't know if that sounded like Epic or not. I mean, not really. Which one? The, the newest one? Yeah, the newest one. It was pretty good, actually. I liked it. Yeah, yeah that was, it was really good. good. I, yeah, I just, I just didn't. All, no although time. My, my favorite post Faith No More non uh, Mike Patton project I was just reminded of was that Roddy Bottom. Um, oh, man. Man, man on Man. Man on Man or like something him, like that. Yeah. It, him and his boyfriend essentially um, like did a cross country road trip at the very beginning of the pandemic to get out of the East coast and into LA and like wrote a record and filmed a bunch of crazy stuff along the way. And then now they have a band called man on man and it's awesome. Um, I saw some, I saw something like blabbermouth people were shitty about it because it was, it was two dudes. Yeah, probably. I, yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It was That's like, all I, I mean, the, 
the video that, extent of my knowledge about it. Yeah. Yeah. You they, know, because there's no other bands that are two dudes. Yeah. They're just not dating. Like, well, and it makes well, all no, the I, difference I, in the world. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck them. They're dating. Yeah. <laughs> the two dudes are a couple. Was yeah. 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 Well, and the, and the video that they put out for the first song was mostly them two you know big hairy bears in their tidy whities rolling around <laughs> which was, i thought it was fantastic kind of awesome yeah, yeah it's kind of awesome it yeah, was good yeah. Stuff. It's a good video should we listen to some music yeah talking about music yeah. Let's, should we do it i think it's time to listen to some music so now since it's a little different you're you're a professional at this we had yeah. tr- we had a little trouble Ooh. with with billy from dune and stone too first of all the t- the terror that whatever we're gonna play for you you've already heard probably already <laughs> they've probably yeah. submitted it to you as well um but we're getting some pretty fucking fresh stuff where a lot of projects recorded during the pandemic oh yeah um, yeah a lot um, of a lot of like i'm in this band now i have a solo project no shit yeah, yeah. there's something i did by myself and some really? of some of it's been incredible, like the Vultures at Arms Reach EP, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. which I need to go back. It's been a, a so good. Travis's birthday was just yesterday, and so I got reminded I need to go back. Happy and birthday, Travis! Listen to that again. Um, some, you know, fairly trashy stuff, but basically and we got somebody getting raped by Bigfoot. Yeah, fucked by Bigfoot. Fucked that, by Bigfoot. That was a good one. Um, it was consensual. <laughs> but but uh, really, this is kind of like more of a discussion of. You know what? What? What gets you to press play? What gets you to keep listening? You know what happens when you form your first impressions? How does the art or the presentation on Bandcamp or anything like that kind of impact your experience? And and to some degree, like giving some advice or just thoughts about the process to these bands who are all DIY artists yeah. just trying to trying to get heard, trying to cut through the noise and, and get heard or seen. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times bands will make an, a fucking incredible eight minute long song. Mm. But nobody's not, I can't say nobody, not everybody's going to give you a full eight minutes to decide whether or not they want to sure. keep listening. You know, they're going to look at your artwork. They're going to hear that intro. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, so are we listening to gnome? gnome gnome first? All right. I'm going to share my screen. So you earthen dwellers, the song you will be able to see what it I is. I watch you guys do this with Andy Patterson. Oh, good. Oh, nice. Andy, Andy, well, is, uh, Andy is, I, I wish I knew him better, but in the several conversations I've had with him, he's a wonderful human being. Oh, he's the best. He's, he's, a he super used to be in a band called Iota. That was just incredible. Um, they put out, one record on small stone uh and just oh my god iota it was like 2008 and they were just miles ahead of everyone at that point yeah and then and then they weren't a band anymore yeah <laughs> yeah we, we asked andy how many bands have you been in he's been in all of them and all he's them. like all of them i don't all know of them. <laughs> no that's that's yeah legitimately he yeah. has stories for days yeah i mean Who if you want to be in a band with that guy seriously did, did you listen to the whole episode or did no, you I didn't. I didn't cut was, snippets of it. Yeah, so no. it's it's a little unfair because Andy and JD have known each other since they were teenagers. Oh. Came, up, came up in Salt Lake City together. So all right, uh, it, you know when you have and I've met Andy a bunch of times now. So it's like some guests we've never met before. Some guests we have stories that go you know go back <laughs> go way back go back decades <laughs> the way way back. And Andy's the perfect mix of familiarity and just like the most stories of anyone I know. Sure. And and a and a stellar storyteller. Like oh yeah, just a hilarious dude. Yeah. But yeah, that's. <laughs> That's the truth. Who wouldn't want to be in a band with Andy? This yeah. is kind of the takeaway when you meet him at five minutes. Well, there were those three those those three bands that uh, <laughs> that he, undi- <laughs> he did not yeah. pass the pass the test. Yeah, he <laughs> he talked about auditioning for bands that did not take him. Those three bands where his auditions wow. were not successful. Wow. All right, so this is Gnome, Gnome from, Belgium. from Belgium. Oh, you know them? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. All right. Whew. So, what song do they want? Earthen Dweller. Earthen Dweller. So, track one. Let's do it.
Wagner. I'm trying to wait until we get to the vocals, but there's not. I just noticed it says it's a three piece no. instrumental. <laughs> All right, then I was waiting for the vocals too. And then I, <laughs> it's an instrumental dummy. It's cool though. I like it. Oh, well, I that's mean, their, that's their first release from 2018. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Apparently, they sent us an older that's a trio. Yeah, right. That's what it looks like in the picture. Yeah, yeah. it Antwerp. looks like their only release. It looks like their only release. Yeah, that's it. So they. Probably for you know they're formed in the wake of kind of the desert fest mm-hmm. Belgium thing. Um, I mean, blow up the picture. The band mind. photo. Yeah, because it looks like they're wearing. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. There we go. Yeah, they are. That's kind of cool. Oh, they yeah. play King Star. Yeah, you know, um, it's fine. They're cool. Yeah, I mean, I definitely had a well. I've definitely heard this before, which yeah. isn't which isn't necessarily a sin. But I I always say if you're gonna do that, you got to execute it at a really high level to cut through the noise. Well, they are wearing no. Yeah, minutes. but I mean, we listen to like two minutes of it too. Yeah, 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 yeah correct. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree that the basic mm-hmm. basic premise of what I heard in the two minutes or whatever it was is pretty familiar, but. I don't necessarily think that's a problem either, especially for a DIY band on the first release. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I like the cover. The artwork is cool too. It's like the artwork is cool. gnome. Yeah, yeah, I actually deep. like the one thing that stands out to me that I think is really cool is how the O is actually uh, negative space yes. between the N and the M. So we like have it's creative. Somebody fluent in art I would or, like, or I design. Would, I would, can we hear a couple seconds of uh, bathed in shoes? Sure. Cool? I, I actually wanted to listen to a little bit of Ye Old Beans. <laughs> no. Because, but but I'm equally intrigued by uh, mm-hmm. ba- bathed, bathed in cheese. cheese. Let's yeah, do they it. Got their, they got the song title game working. I like that. Yeah, so this is just like a kind of tongue in cheek. Well, it's, like, it's not really tongue in cheek. The music isn't. No. There, there isn't enough of this ir- irreverence. Sometimes the genre takes itself a little too seriously. Yeah. So yeah, well, I well. guess if you don't sing about anything, yeah, you yeah, everybody, everybody's call everybody's it whatever you want. <laughs> They What'd have, you say? I said everybody's a frog band now, so they have to take themselves super seriously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't... That pendulum I... will, will flip back. Give yeah. it a couple of years. I, I don't feel attacked by that at all, actually. We'll all be bathed in <laughs> cheese. Let's, <laughs> let's bathe in cheese. Oh, shit. We're in the middle of writing a bunch of like space country songs, so. We're, we're we're trying to take it back to a, a little bit sillier time. I think I think that's been the result of spending a year in isolation. Is like, I actually don't really want to write about the end of the world right now. <laughs> right, exactly. Yes, yeah. yeah, a little little escapism. I think that's yeah. well earned. Yeah. yeah. All right. So here's bathed in cheese. I never thought I would say that. <laughs> See, I'm a little more. I'm a little more big like than cheese than Earthen Dweller. <laughs> yeah. That that was like if Clutch wrote a Christmas Carol. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, was, had I was gonna say it had a very '90s, a very '90s weird kind of vibe to it. Yeah, 
I th- and now I think I want uh, Clutch to write an album yeah. of Christmas carols because I'm not sure there's a better poet out there to write a bunch of new Christmas carols. Oh, they'll get there. Than, than yeah, but- Neil Fallon. <laughs> they'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> they'll get there. Now that you're alive. does the standards. Yeah. Now that you're a lockdown, we'll be doing holidays with, with Clutch, right? Shake right. Fallon. Nice. All right. Yield beans. We're going to listen to some beans. I need, I, sorry. I need to. No, this is actually, and you, you know, you're hearing this for people listening. The disclaimer: this is being played over Zoom. By the time it gets squashed down on the podcast, it will no longer be stereo. Don't judge the audio quality from the podcast feed. Go to Bandcamp and listen and to listen it. To it. And download the wave files and listen to it in its real form. But this will give you a sense of what what we're hearing. It's not fair because JD and I are listening to it through like a an audio interface with good headphones and i will say the production is um pretty great yeah it is it, actually it's um you know for music like this it's everything's really articulate it's um it's a good mix of kind of like tight and space it, it sounds really good on on mm-hmm. our end all right yield sounds, beans sounds clean coming through here yeah. does it oh, okay good, good. Yeah. yeah i'm in yeah yeah That's cool. I like that. Yeah, willing to be a little weird. Kind of yeah, better. completely. Both both of those intros sounded like they could have been um, intros to a um, Queens of the Stone Age songs, but the Josh Homme only Queens of the Stone Age, yeah. the new one, not not huh. the old, not the old one. Right, right. Um, yeah, that and that that song definitely got into kind of the more desert, the kind of desert mm. vibes that could have been a a full queen song at least the intro no this is good stuff yeah. well done yeah. no well done gnome now put out another album yeah make make some more music <laughs> it's not like there was a pandemic in there somewhere that come on gnome. <laughs> i know to be i mean I these mean, can't believe these guys come on give it the program nope. <laughs> Seriously. Swearing, guys. I, I, am, I am jealous of the musicians who are in kind of the the position in the pandemic where they're kind of like unattached like say if i was 25 and single and all i did was write music with my three friends who were all also 25 and single and say we lived in a house together imagine right. and have the ability to oh produce your own music imagine what you could have done <laughs> four yeah. albums at least by now yeah and then you just gotta bank them yeah just right. sit tight or release them instead of touring the next uh band is lion's skull lions i think it's the like the first yeah there you go and the song is called The Core. Ooh, okay. Ooh, we're getting heavy. Circle mm-hmm. vibes, swirls. Yeah, we're, we're spiraling downward. Yeah. yeah. It looks like it should be an unreadable logo, but you can read it. Yeah. So, yeah, that was an <laughs> interesting take. <laughs> I thought I would like that better. I actually prefer it was less legible. When you can't read it? Yeah. <laughs> God. I'm, I'm, I'm getting into this whole illeg- illegible logo thing. Uh, I like the legible logo with like the the solid print logo underneath, right? Like you see in like death metal festival lineups. Oh yeah, yeah. The logo and then the band's the name. name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's my, so that's you'll my... know. Okay, so what was the crazy um, band description from Andy's episode? Melting. I it, I can't even remember. Yeah, no, it, it was, was like, like weird. acoustic grunge melty that oh they were like describing yeah. themselves what? so here's one that i'm gonna yeah, they're gonna have a hard remember. time proving to me atmospheric grind how do you what is atmospheric <laughs> grind let's Fast find and out slow let's loud find, and low let's find out i'm let's curious out. whoa okay they want us to start with the core yeah All let's right. so let's they're from finland they some be, atmospheric grinds from finland they're from finland they might just pull it off yeah yeah, yeah. The the logo says they only got lost like a quarter mile into the woods. Yeah. <laughs> they, they didn't they didn't like lose a whole weekend in the in the forests of Finland. All right, here we go.
Yeah, I, yeah. You hear yeah. the atmospheric? Yeah. Where? I, I don't think we got to the atmosphere yet. You didn't. You didn't get there no, yet. Where are you hearing atmospheric? I, think it's, <laughs> I mean, I think what they mean is we're gonna we're gonna like play some pounding riffs mm. in the beginning, and then we're gonna have a you know we're gonna have a tremolo picked noisy black metal section, and then when the singer comes in, he's gonna grunt instead of instead of squealing or screaming. That's kind of oh, that, that's kind of my that's takeaway. The Maybe part. not atmospheric enough, huh. but I, I, I it's, think I like it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you, I mean, you, you know, you, you like that, that, um, reminded me of like old in tune, like that Sunlight Studios kind of. Wah, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. That might that might be a little bit of atmosphere. Yeah. All right. Well, let's give let's, it a, let's give a it little a, more time. Yeah, the whole, the whole time. song is only two and a half minutes long, so we can give them. We Not a major them. investment. No. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I like I like that actually. What are the what are their names? They have awesome oh, do they have, names. Do they have, yeah. they have good names? So. Music is Slipa Turia Suo and lyrics are Panula. Nice. <laughs> Panula. Yeah, it was uh, yeah, finished grind. Fucking me. Yeah. I like yeah. that. I mean I think I think in the context of, you know, uh metal, black metal, whatever. When you say atmospheric, what you mean is an unreasonable amount of reverb at some point during the song. <laughs> there is there is going to be so much reverb that all you hear is just like a hiss, and not right. in, not the articulation of any is of that the what notes it is? or music. Yeah, and right. that's I mean, it, it and it was originally because of like trash recording setups and bad gear. You know, a practice room with a mic hanging from the ceiling is a great way to get atmosphere in a, in a recording, also known as you know, lots lots of room, lots of room sound. Yes, yes. And uh, and then they carried that forward by just recreating that experience in the studio with yeah. with unhealthy reverb. It's, it's a temptation all the time. Reverb is so satisfying in the moment. Like it's like, oh, that 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 part's kind of rough and then you crank up the reverb and you're like, ah, oh, it's <laughs> there you go. pretty smooth now. Nice. There's a reason why um, when you watch a, a guitar player about to launch into a solo, almost all of them are going to do two things if they, if they have a pedal board. They're going to click some sort of very minor reverb and then they're going to cl click some sort of very minor delay because mm -hmm. it just takes the edge off um, the imperfections in, mm. in your playing, like uh, like a carbon copy and then some kind of reverb pedal, or or even better, um, we talked about it on the episode with Jordan Olds, um, the, the pedal that Dunnable makes, which is basically a reverb, a delay, and a boost all in one pedal so that you just press the button and it's like the so it's like the beast mode solo sweet button. Deedly, deedly <laughs> pedal. The, the solo button. <laughs> Right, one stop shopping. Yeah, one, one stop shopping because it's just it's fairly ubiquitous. It's pretty rare to see a guitar player, and I know this because I play with one who does launch into a solo with no reverb and no delay. Carl plays dry, and hmm. that that uh, I, that's either a confidence or stupidity. I I'm not you know I'm I'm unclear. He also <laughs> launches into most of his solos as improvisational efforts, although he does write he does write them too. He prefers to. He prefers to improv live, but 
He's he's a he's a different beast. Most of them are hitting that delay and reverb <laughs> to make things sound smooth and purdy. Oh, that was good. I think All I right. get I think I get the sense. What's next? We got one more. All right, and then we'll uh, visit the merch table. So uh, the next one is a band called uh, Helestios or Helestios. Okay, are they Greek? Um, I, oh, it sounds Greek, doesn't it? It certainly does. Oh my goodness! Come on. Oh, come on now. Come on. Your pain tastes good. Uh, I don't know about that's, this. That's a bit much. I think we went into this. Um, Look at that poor lady. Yeah. Someone I get was, the, I someone was, get the poor lady a sandwich. Yeah, yeah seriously. And some pants. Come on. We did. Uh, we did. Uh, this actually came up once, and I think this is the f- an interesting cross section of what we get. What we get submitted to us is, I think this is the first al- album cover with like a scantily clad I, lady. I think it is that we've actually, actually. gotten in twenty four episodes, four to six songs per episode. Well, you you had a good run. We had a good. Yeah, run. we had a great run. Yeah. Um, yeah why did she not have on anything? She looks like a woman warrior, which is, I mean, woman warrior, great. She's like yeah. a sci-fi Valkyrie. fight the world, but why is she having no pants? It's a sci-fi Valkyrie. Is that it? A sci-fi Valkyrie. Oh, okay. And then there's tentacle. We got to have tentacles. Come on, people. Right. Uh, See, so these... And yet, if you look at that artwork from like the, the standpoint, you can actually see the, the masculine fear of femininity because yeah. her breasts and her genitals are covered. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. So it's actually, you know, it looks like it's this, this, glorifying objectification of a feminine ideal but it and yet it denies the most feminine yeah uh, it, it's, it's, yeah I see, I see this shit all the time oh i yeah. can imagine and and the penis envy from underneath there with those giant tentacles yeah. giant tentacles you, you wish buddy <laughs> yeah, it's a bit it's a bit much this one yeah. your right. pain good starting at minus right, one guys Helestios. they're from Helestios. basing basing stoke in the uk Huh. But we got a bunch of people with not English sounding names. Right. Oh, well. Agnes Alds. Stelios, Agalus. So, yeah, there's definitely somebody Greek there. Henri Leja. Yeah. All right. What do they want us to hear? Um, uh, All Attack. All Attack. All That's right. Nice. They will tell me out Rain that shit makes I can roll down You never leave Not for me that's metal. Not my thing. That's that's metal. metal. Yeah, that's like. Blow up that. Blow up that picture again. Of them. Yeah, that is that is some shirt. That is some shirt. He must and be the Greek one. The, the white. Yeah. Shirt. No. <laughs> white shirt. It's funny. White if you shirt. Put... White pants, man. That's that's bold. Yeah, that's. I like, there's a... I like everybody wearing sunglasses. I like. I like the the big crane in the background the and the cargo roller. containers. Like maybe yeah. these guys are stevedores. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like my man on the right with the fierce judgment. Right? Fierce judgment. Yeah. Fierce Why are you judgment. looking at me? He is not into whatever you're selling. Yeah, I, oh, man, that's a good picture. Pictures are hard, dude. Band pictures are hard. Yeah, I hate. I hate taking them. It, yeah, yeah, it's true, man. It's it's that's rough. But uh, oh yeah, yeah. These guys, they nailed it. Um, yeah. They they nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The song is so it's pretty pretty like modern metal. Of the yeah, mm-hmm. post Lamb of God sort of yeah. variety. I don't like know. The Pantera. It's the Pantera branch. Yeah, and it's then, not really my thing, but you yeah. know, it, Someone, you know, somebody likes it. It's dude metal. Yeah, but I bet. <laughs> yeah, but dude metal. Clearly, dude metal. The, yeah. The, yeah. Or, Artwork, I mean, art. a lot. Most metal is dude metal, but Already this is that. definitely dude metal. Yeah, yeah, That's, yeah. All right. We don't need to show that art anymore. No, no, we can just, and we don't need to listen anymore. To be claiming honest. the masculine space, right? Yeah, <laughs> I could go. I could 
fucking go on. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm being. We're all like, hmm, how how deep do we want to go? Into no, this? it's I don't. I yeah. yeah. And see, this is and this is the other thing. So people, we people send us these. I randomly pick us uh, sure. the band and the song and put a link, and we get some we don't know what we're yeah we don't know (laughs) well that's that's the that's the fun right yeah that's the fun that is the fun Um, there's an audience for this unfortunately there's an audience for this you know (laughs) but once again i I, why why does it have to uh... yeah i like what i always jd and i both have two daughters and uh Mm -hmm. and so i always think like what if that record was just like sitting up on the top of my stack of records next to the record player and like my 13 year old's like, what the hell is this, dad? Yeah. He's like, yeah. And I'd be like, is a, <laughs> I don't know. You're like, I don't know. <laughs> well, let, let's, let's take this as a, te- as a teachable, <laughs> yeah, moment a teachable moment about the history right, of exactly. female exploitation in rock and metal. Yeah. It's like this, this, yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah. 70 some odd cents to the dollar. I mean, you know, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Whatever. So it's um, all emblematic of the same shit. <laughs> I, I will say that I can only think of one other uh, person in modern metal who pulls off the all white metal look and actually pulls it off. And that's the um, the singer for um, fuck the Street Doom band from Portland. Uh, oh, uh, R.I.P. Yeah, R.I.P. R- R- I- P. That dude is like puffy white that? tennies, white 501s, yeah. white, de- white trucker, Levi's trucker jacket. It's the metal. It's like photo negative metal costume. It's, it's brilliant. Oh, who was the other guy that got really popular? That was, Oh, Andrew WK. Andrew WK. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. YouTube really thinks I want to see his new video. I know. Yeah. I, I saw that today as well. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> YouTube is like, you really want to watch this? I'm like, no, I don't. No. Was no. Eight, 2018 was the year he DJed at the center bar at Psycho, wasn't it? It was 17 or 18. It was one of the one of those it years of that he did a late night set as a yeah. DJ. I remember kind of sitting there going, this is weird as hell. Yeah. Like, well, it's a, yeah, he's like total experience. party metal, but from yeah. what I understand, he's actually a really good dude. Yeah, yeah. I That's my actually, opinion. Yeah. I, I listened to a long-form interview of him once, and yeah, I was like, smart. oh, wow, this is not... Fucking smart. He's not who you think he is yeah, at all. So. exactly. That's always good to hear. Well, you guys visit the merch table, and I'm going to take a break. You're going to visit the restroom? Yeah. Ye oh, of the show me back. Ye of the small bladder. This is Ye fully legal here, too. If you, if you need to do that at some point, feel free. Oh, um, But... I, JD and I have opposite bladder situations. I can go like twelve hours in between using the bathroom, and he's. Oh, got I'm about... like I'm like every fifteen to twenty five minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So. All right, what so you... I got I got a bunch of stuff. This is exciting, and I was waiting for a while for it. This is a signed copy of the 2014 Imperial Triumphant release oh, that nice. um, combined their first album and an EP into a single vinyl release. And they have they have cool signatures, just like they have cool stage costumes. Have you ever have you ever seen them live? No, I have not. Oh, they're a blast. Have you listened to them much? Or yes. I see yeah, you're familiar. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. They're they're uh, they're really cool, um, interesting dudes. Like deep 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 music musicians and artists that that cover a lot of different ground from jazz to, you know, from jazz to extreme metal and beyond. And uh, I. I randomly went to see Iwata in Boston at the Middle East a couple of years ago mm-hmm. and um they were opening they were the first band oh, it was nice. it was them That's a good show. Shit. Yeah. and uh who was the other band whatever they were first and I they played and then I watched the other two bands and I was like oh, I wish I had just stopped watching after <laughs> after yeah. they played because that was the, the Middle best East thing. man I, I like that spot it's really cool and apparently it's uh as with every other venue of that size is kind of it's uh it's life is hanging in the balance right now yeah, they've been, the are. owners have been radio silent um well we talk- that's, that's sort of the story of boston too is everything was like could be condos tomorrow you yeah. don't know <laughs> yeah i talked to um aaron gray from gray school <laughs> booking a bit mm-hmm. and uh and he's good at giving the venue updates on Facebook. And um, I guess the owners have had the place up for sale for years. Um, uh, but there's they've been radio silent since the pandemic. I love that. The that that was in the downstairs portion of yeah. the Middle East. So yeah, I, I, Middle East down. Middle East. I like. I think I was in Middle East up more than down. But I saw uh, 
St. Vitus play in the Middle East down. Um, and, and like, was there, and I was like, this is really cool. But I yeah. don't think I want to see high on fire in this room. No, you might you end know? up dead. And there's yeah, posts. That was there's it. Posts. it was like that, kind of, <laughs> that kind of experience. It's like, I, there's, there's no place to like get high. out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, um, but it was a cool spot. Uh, you yeah. know, you, oh, I saw all them witches upstairs and goes a ton of times, of course. Um, Ooh, yeah. And a lot of the and a lot of like the Boston band road saw and so on. And Smallstone did a couple showcases there. Worshipper. Worshipper, yes. <laughs> um, and those guys are great. And um but yeah, man, I like that spot. You know, Boston was was a hard town for me because I was I was like just far enough away for it to be a pain in the ass. And Boston's just enough of a pain in the ass to be a pain in the ass. <laughs> so, you know. It was it was a tough town for me to see shows in, but uh, but I did like the movies, especially. I when... I go there a lot for work, um, mm-hmm. and when I'm there for work, escaping at night because I usually don't have night commitments, I can always find a show. Like I don't think I've ever been to Boston and not been able to see a show almost every night that I was there, and mm-hmm. it's fun because work's paying my Uber tab. So uh-huh. I like, don't care where the venue is. <laughs> Honestly, it's like, oh, that that's out in a once ballroom. That's out in whatever Alston. I don't care. Sure, mm-hmm. sounds yeah. sounds good. Yeah, I saw right. I saw a bunch of shows at once, and that that's they have some really there's some really cool venues in the Boston yeah. area. Hopefully they uh, re- resurrect once after. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I kind of hope once comes back. You know? I was I was, uh, JJ Gonson who runs who runs once. Uh, had a, uh, you know, was doing a kind of webcast and had me on and, and you know, it was super cool. And she's like, she's you know, ultra passionate and got, you know, I hope her venue comes back as well. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was lucky enough to catch Elder there a couple years ago, mm-hmm. you know, when they happened to be back in the States. Yep. Um, that, that was a, that was actually a really fun show because it was Elder and then Roadsaw played. And then what's that insane band from New Hampshire with the big buff front man? Oh, that'd like, be Scissor Fight. Scissor Fight. There nice. we go. Scissor Fight. Yes. <laughs> and, and Worshipper that night. So it was. That's a, a good show. That's, that a, a, that's about as good. As, that's about as much as you can ask out of a, out of a, an evening at one's ballroom. That's pretty yeah, good. That was a that was a hell of a night. And <laughs> then I also saw I've seen Elder there twice because I also saw um, on the tour that Lord Bo, uh, Lord Buffalo. Or sorry, King Buffalo King was Buffalo. Um, was supporting them, and yep. that that's a really fun combo because they're not that similar. Um, no, you know, but they King, fit together. But they fit together really, really well. And then obviously they're friends because at least a lot of the releases are on Stickman, right? The King Buffalo yeah. releases. Yeah, King Buffalo. Yeah, Europe. Uh, Stickman does Europe distribution for Elder and King Buffalo. Yeah. All right, so then I had the Imperial Triumphant record, and then I just got a, <gasps> a goodie box from my my old bud buddy, Buddy Donner from Glory or Death Records. Buddy, buddy. Uh, occasionally, we'll just drop a box of fun fun stuff my way. So the tape tape version of the Thin Lizzy tribute record, nice, always yeah. fun. Seems appropriate to listen to on a cassette. Ooh, to still me. wrapped. And then um, like three of his recent releases. So this, the formula 400 record that just, I came haven't out. heard that yet. I haven't heard that yet. I haven't listened to it yet. Um, no. the, I want the to ethereal C record that came out earlier in uh-huh. the 2020. Yep. And then That's this good. is Jeez. really brilliant packaging for, um, uh, blasting rod. So mm. they did like a full mm-hmm. Japanese style. Yeah. O- OBI, OB strip. OB yeah. strip and uh really interesting cover art so i haven't i haven't listened to any of this yet so i'm excited to throw these on the on the turntable it was in the back of my car because i just grabbed it yesterday Ooh, but this is that one, the wax mage so this is the special edition that's on the no. um the og splatter so it's cool. not wax mage but it's a similar process that's cool and we did art? the th- we did the thin the we did a version of the thin li- uh, thin lizzie pe- record pe- 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 pressed like this it's um, awesome it's so there's they look amazing in person yeah so, thank you buddy now i have stuff to listen to thanks buddy buddy thanks buddy buddy the buddy hey buddy, yeah. hey, buddy. i could just I'm sure he's no, i'm sure he's never heard that one before <laughs> never. oh god i could do i could do that forever that that south park movie is one of the funniest films of all time 
it's so subversive especially considering how old it is right all all the stuff with satan and saddam hussein like are you kidding me yeah come back to, come back, yeah. come back to bed yeah it's, exactly. <laughs> it's so that is a good movie it's bananas <laughs> have you so what what is your relationship with purchasing physical music do you buy stuff yeah do you get promos yeah. sent to you yes have you I, been oh. Have all you, of the above have you been actively do you have anything that you've picked up recently that you you have to show I, off like, um i got the I, I guess the latest highlight was the um i got the magnetic eye records uh the, the day of the, doom all the day of doom the live records TV. Yeah. um that was gorgeous um you know packaging art book made me like want to buy everything that magnetic eye puts out in the book uh, had had some of my photos in it uh, that I was uh, that I was kind of stoked to see, you know, in print. Yeah, that, uh, that that's killer. But, yeah, I, I got the elephant tree. JD bought me the elephant tree record oh, for Christmas. That was my Christmas gift. Stupid habits, man. That record is so good. It is. Yeah, uh, you're we're we're elephant tree stands over here. Uh, so completely. Yeah. Uh, nice, nice, uh, and sweet guys. To oh, a, yeah. to a man, they are. Uh, uh, to, I've, wonderful people yeah we got to we got to spend a little time chatting with them that they're good friends with so uh you you know broom from the bay area so jamie from broom used to be in a band in england called gert oh yeah uh, yes yes, yes. Gert. so gert, yes. gert's party dude gert. gert's gert's incredible yep. gert, and uh, and was part of that whole like with gert trippy wicked all those yeah. bands yeah so nope. Jamie Jamie was in Gert, and so when Broom played Desert Fest, they toured with Gert, and um, I think played some shows with Elephant Tree too, because I think those guys are all friendly. So it was like, hey, you're a friend of a friend. Let me talk to you for ten minutes <laughs> and chew your ear off about how great your record is. And that was was that seventeen because they ended up playing twice. So we got to see Elephant Tree two times because somebody dropped out on the last day, and so mm. we got to play a pool, a surprise pool party set after they had already played in in vinyl. Oh yeah, that was oh. that whole Zach Sabbath Zach Sabbath fuffle, right? Like, I, th I think so. Now, they showed were, up late or something. I can't remember. There were multiple events like that. Um, Psycho's a logistical nightmare. Talking to the band, oh. talking to the bands. I can't even imagine. That's, yeah, that, that's kind of my understanding. Is that it, it's yeah messy. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot of coordination goes into that kind of thing. Well, it's funny to see and talk to the folks, you know, because you have to use the back line. But right. like halfway through the first day, the drum kit in the vinyl stage is just like fucking demolished, and the backup right. drum yes, kits course. demolished, and the backup backups demolished. How could it and not the, be? Yeah. Of course, like like Andy Patterson, you know, Yob. To, you know the opening right. night and then you know five bands in you've had toke and <laughs> just people beating the absolute living shit out yeah. of the gear and they're not they're not turning it over enough so there's like a bunch of non-working gear on stage and so uh, in, interesting tough stuff. times tough stuff. It's, it's it's a it's an interesting experience yeah, I mean we've we've put on much smaller versions, but of even a, a, a two stage backline festival. It's a lot of work, man. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah. it's an insane. Never again. Oh wait, no, probably. Well, and the, actually, the bands show up and they're like, "We're playing at the pool. Where do we take our gear?" People wandering around the hotel with <laughs> heads and guitars and pedal boards, trying to figure out where the hell to go. So, complicated. Crazy town. It's a yeah. It's complicated. That's it. It's yeah. Like, I wouldn't be putting on Cycle Las Vegas. That shit is hard. Yeah. And now, I mean, obviously, they've got big. They've got big money backing. I mean, yeah. I'm sure the festival has to make its own money, but you know, they have the part of a major media company now. So there's, I would expect things. I didn't go to the Mandalay Bay event, but I ex, I would expect that part of it to be improved now. Hopefully, yeah. we'll see. Must be nice. Well. I don't, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't make it. <laughs> How about you? Know. You got anything, JD? I got you my any? shirt. Oh, I got this cool shirt. <laughs> uh, cool shirt. Um, from it's it's from Zeitgeist, which is a beer bar here in San Francisco, um, mm -hmm. and they don't do shows or anything. But they, I mean, that's where everybody hangs out, right? Yeah. Everybody that goes to the shows goes to Zeitgeist. Yeah, if there's a show in the Mission, if there's a show at the Chapel or when the Elbow Room used to still be there, before and after the show, all the bands would be. 
at Zeitgeist because they just have a big outdoor patio and even before the laws changed, everybody just smoked weed on the patio and no one, yeah. <laughs> no one cared. And so, so yeah, so this was actually designed by Jeremy Fish, which is a local artist uh, who does a ton of really cool shit. And just another plug that like, you know, venues that you go to, venues that you go to see bands, they're selling merch right now. Yeah. Go and buy their merch. You yeah. know, they're doing collaborations with artists to try to get to try to push it. But like this is how they're paying their staff right now. This is how they're staying in business. Yeah. As, is, as, as they all scratch for the federal money and the state save our stages money and then yeah. any, any local money that's available. Um, they're all also probably doing their own GoFundMes and selling selling shit, pre-selling drinks. Yes, yeah, so you buy this bar and you're just doing that in Brooklyn. Yeah. Doing a lot yeah, of exactly. collaborations, like you said. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you buy stuff from the bands that you like, but also go and see if the venues that you frequent are selling stuff because yeah. they they need to stay in business or they're not going to be back. Uh, or there's, when nowhere, the there's nothing to come back to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a, I forgot. I, I do have one other thing. Ooh. Ooh. This is a. So if you're a musician traveling through the Bay Area, you probably recognize that logo, but it's a shop called The Starving Musician. And it's a. Okay. Uh, you used a new gear shop it's where you go if you don't want to go to guitar center and give them your money uh, when you roll through town and need strings or a quick setup or a, to buy new gear to, or a lot of bands actually hunt for used gear when they're on the road because when you're mm -hmm. traveling you kind of widen the net of you know what you have access to so they check and starving's got a shop in uh, san jose and santa cruz so and yes, another sir. small local business to support. When I when I first started playing, when I was a teenager, I bought my shit there. And then when I wanted to buy new stuff, I sold gear there. And the the gear buyer, the main gear buyer at the store that was in Sunnyvale at the time, is Merv Haggard, who is um, a really well known local guitar player. Um, Merv Brain and Butthouse were three guys that formed a band called the Limbo Maniacs, which was like. A, the band that opened for Primus probably more than any other band at the beginning of Primus. Um, but there are three local legends who like f graduated from high school, went down to LA, went to GIT and you know, the musicians Institute of technology and just like hammered hard and then came back and played in a million bands. Um, brain ended up being the drummer for guns and roses for a little while. That period yeah. when, when Buckethead was, um, playing guitar mm -hmm. brain was the drummer and he was also he was the in drummer. Primus too. he, he was, was the, the Brown drummer Brown. for primus yeah when yeah. when when tim took a break oh yep and uh and merv had a band called merv um that's a, a bit like a wacky bay area i legend. remember merv. you yeah. remember merv yeah I do. Yep. yeah there's a couple of really great merv records so merv was the buyer and he was a weird dude <laughs> 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 I, believe I, remember, that. I remember i believe that yes yeah and Merv and Brian Kehoe, who was also in Merv, was the other guitar player, is kind of another local legend. And he's like an artist rep for one of the gear companies, MXR or Jim Dunlop, maybe. So okay. so he works with you know tons oh. of artists, oh. artist sponsorships and stuff like that. So nice. if you want to you want to go down that that uh, Bay Area weird 90s rabbit hole that I talk about all the time, Merv's another band to add to the list. And Limbo Maniacs, if you just want to get um, the flavor of a goofy funk metal party rap band that have, with really stupid songs like butt funkin and <laughs> it's, yeah. it's it's absurd but but it was a lot of fun there was the, a lot of those goofy bands back in the 90s all like they loved to do that word play with funk and fuck oh yeah like, mm -hmm. everything was funk and something yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's one of the one of the True. downsides of the, the funk ethos yeah. it's like we get it all the songs are about fucking it. yeah <laughs> stop saying it yeah uh, what's another clever. what's another place what's... to see with an ends yeah there so you go yeah. right there really yeah. it's, the, it's like the low-hanging fruit of funk wordplay it is yeah. uh, funk yeah. wordplay yeah, yeah. <laughs> so add yeah so so what's the list so far we got grotus grotus we, we got uh not the, funk the blue uh, just weird bit the weird bay area 90s bands the blue chunks uh now you got merv you can add to the list who else psycho funkopus that was a good one that's a real that was a real band and not a line from the old greg <laughs> sketch <laughs> i'm old greg <laughs> on mighty boosh 
I think he put the whole funk thing to rest when he told the the, the origin story of Parliament, funk, the origin story of the funk at the on the back half of that. Yeah. Have you ever seen Old, old Greg? Oh, Can't say so, I have, no. so the Mighty Boosh it was a um, English sketch. Oh com- yeah, yeah, com- yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So there's a sketch they did just about this sca- a scaly man fish named Old Greg, and I'm sure most people <laughs> listening probably know it by heart. <laughs> <laughs> so it starts there, but it ends with him telling this animated story about how the funk was born. A funky ball of tits from outer space fell to Earth. And <laughs> I think they right. put a stamp on that, the whole you know, sex, sexy side of funk, and we don't have to talk about it anymore. You just point people back to that. And go, just point them back to it. That's what exactly. it is. Woo! Should we listen to some more sexy music? Do we have? I hope, I hope we have more, more naked ladies. Yeah, I I'm, I'm really want to go down a rabbit hole. I mean, I would... I I would love to start a band someday that's kind of like an exploitation parody band and just take all <laughs> of the conventions and devices musically and visually but just reverse the just sex. Do it with dudes. <laughs> just do dudes. just just dudes. do it, do it with dudes. I like it and just write songs about it. Or really you could just play Judas Priest songs. Yeah. You could just be a, a Judas <laughs> Priest tribute band and just use dudes for everything. Wiener shaped cod pieces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, All right. What's, what's next? Next is Canopy. Can, oh, Can of Peas? Or Canopy. 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 Right, my mouse. Is your, is your mouse my mouse messing is up here? Uh-oh. Yeah, so. All right. Second. Back. Let's get up there. Are you sure it's your mouse? I think oh, something's stuck on your... Something's going crazy. I think it's right... Th- oh, there we go. We'll get there. We have no producer, if you couldn't tell. Oh come there on! You go. <laughs> All right, either. keep going. Canopy. There you go. There we go. We'll share this bad boy. Oh, I think we're gonna get something dark again. Sure, hope so. I'm tired of all this joy and happiness. All this joy and happiness. Mm. Canopy. Oh. Speaking of joy and happiness, are you familiar with what's the what's the major key metal band um, that we saw open for Zealand? Oh, uh, shit birds i don't know there's a there's a really funny band that's like plays all styles of metal thrash black metal breakdowns but it's all like asteroid 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 yeah but all, all <laughs> the songs are written in like major key so it sounds oh, like it sounds, sounds like if blink happy. 182 was a was a, <laughs> was a metal band <laughs> it was real weird awesome. it's real weird to your brain yeah someone should, someone should be doing that i feel yeah. like that's we, that's important work that someone should be doing yeah yes all right, so what do we okay, have? Canopy. Ooh, you can sort of. Okay. Yeah, you can still read it. Okay, we've got the black and the swirls. We. <laughs> okay. Humanity yeah. loss. Okay. Mm-hmm. The song is part of me. No, sorry. Ho- getting, hostile architecture. I'm getting uh, a Greek vibe. Here. Greek. Atlanta, Greek. Georgia. Ah. Uh, no, Greek. Like, uh, Greek. Uh, Boston Sludge Band. Yes. Greek. Gotcha. Oh, gotcha. You okay. mean Greece? No. Greece? You're the one that I want. <laughs> I want to go down. Yes. Woo, 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 hey, honey. raise your hand if you participated participated in a high school production of Greece. Anyone? That's one. You're all alone, dude. Okay. <laughs> Guess my role. This will be. This will blow your mind. Oh man, your role. So I was a non. I was not an actor. You were not an actor. No, I was not an actor. Oh, stage crew then. No, I was not stage crew. Really. Were you be- beca- back in the sound booth? No, be- oh. because I'm a fantastic dancer. I was yeah. an assistant choreographer. Oh wow, that's <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Well, right there. Uh, yeah. I do right have to say that I think it was Greece, and I think it was Olivia Newton-John in that final scene that I was like, I think I had my first crush. I was like, oh, oh really? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> got some of those funny feelings <laughs> god what was my, oh that's an interesting question i'm not sure i even know the answer to that my first crush nah, i'll think about yeah. it all right all right so hostile architecture one or two speaking of crushes um oh shit i don't know go with one oh, yeah there we go uh this is canopy one dot bandcamp dot com uh this, that sucks when you find out there's already the canopy yeah, already canopy. Already canopy. yeah. 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 all right oh, here we go it. hostile architecture <laughs>
thoughts? Yeah, fucking A. I'm yeah, into it. Yeah, totally. They, uh-huh. and they, you know what? They brought it. This is an eight minute long song, and they brought it in that first minute. Yeah, they started. You don't it. hear that very often on an eight minute long song. No. <laughs> no, I, was, I mean, yeah, that's pretty solid, actually. <laughs> so, and it, and it uh, a request from me for more Sludge and Doom bands to kind of play with meter and rhythm. That mm-hmm. what I really liked about that was that like the riffs were fairly straightforward, but there was some some experimentation on the rhythm side that I really appreciated. It didn't go exactly where I thought it was going to go. There were some changes and a drop, you know, a, a drop note here or there that yeah. kind of like jar you a little bit, which I like. Yeah. What is that? Click on their not their logo, but the the artist. The yeah. This it's it has a very like sort of pus headus a pus head esque kind of look to it huh but that's cool yeah that this is a piece of art up here that's like three hands and an eye and an or yeah. or boros another, that's cool too because it's all stippling another request i think we i think we did it with the Ouroboros as a theme in metal just like probably I, i've overdone outer space <laughs> i mean but uh, or boros is yeah I think it's I, I this is probably the twentieth Ouroboros we've seen. Is it in artwork, yeah. It's uh yeah, it's, it's a popular theme. Yeah. That's the uh that's the, the snake circle, right? That eats itself. Yeah, yeah, the snake just so everybody that's listening and not watching. <laughs> Ouroboros. Um yeah. Hostile Architecture could be the name of every Imperial Triumphant record, speaking of Yeah. It. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah, no, I like that that's a good. Lot. Why don't you skip forward a few minutes? Yeah, and like, let's, let's go to the middle of the song. Yeah, let's get. Well, more let's guess where the uh, sweet guitar really solo is going to be. There's no sweet. No. What'd you, <laughs> what'd you say, JJ? You said they might space out in the middle. You never know. Ooh, yeah. Of course, that actually they could. <laughs> I wish they would. That'd be. I would take it. They got time. Huh. All right, we gotta we gotta find. I've done this start. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I mean, every every episode since I've told the story. Okay, here we go. But but calling shots is becoming a theme on yeah. this. And, Call your and, shot. And Buddy from the Great Electric Quest called the first shot, which was he looked at the song length and he goes, guitar solo will start at 3 minutes and 38 seconds. Ah. And the guitar solo started at Nailed 3 minutes it. and 38 it's seconds. No, no joke. All right, let's. Okay. Yeah, I'm into that. Yeah, I'll, that's I'll, good. I'll listen to this whole thing. I'm going to listen to this whole thing for sure. Another, yeah. another that kind of tonic, kind of vibe coming back with that heavy part. Where, yeah, I, yeah, I like that. I wish yeah. I could. I wish I could do that vocally. Um, <laughs> another, another, just comment on the rhythm that um, that whole middle section had had a swing feel, which is again mm-hmm. another thing that's not super common in mm-hmm. in Doom. But I love it. I I love a little bit of swing because it, it just I don't know. It, it's a certain kind of swagger that you can only get from that three feel. And they weren't you know they weren't playing a straight swing beat, but it but it was like a three feel on a four. And uh, I I love that. And then you know when you find yourself like most of the time when you're listening to Doom, you don't find yourself like kind of swaying like mm-hmm. like into it. And that's uh, that's why you do that in that yeah. in that part. It was cool. 
Yeah. Nice work, guys. They got a few releases here. Looks like the yeah, first looks... album is 2014. 2011, actually. They did oh, a 2000... demo. Oh, there's well, more. Well, the re... demo is 2011. There's more releases. They have merch. The first EP is 2014. Merch. Any, yeah, they... any merch? Let's see if they got a cool. jewel case CD. I respect it. Wow. Yes. Nice. It's yeah, that's an, that's an actual conversation to have, too. It's funny because um, there's a real push to not do that from a packaging waste standpoint. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. Um, so there's you know digi packs or even just the straight sleeves. I mean, Sleeve. obviously the sleeve is yep. the the least Im- impactful way, but man, there's something satisfying about a, a jewel case until it inevitably breaks. Yeah. Um, right. you know, well. Until one of the tabs breaks <laughs> it's off. It's always one of the tabs. <laughs> one tab. Sure. <laughs> oh, oh, cool. So they actually have a shirt of that cool hands eye or boros thing. Nice. Uh, Looks a little off center with the logo. Like, yeah, you know. that's probably just a graph. That's a layup. Yeah. That's not a picture of sure. the actual no, I know. shirt. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully the printer didn't fuck it up and printed it right. straight. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Yeah, that's actually, uh, I think I've thought of this before, but I'm going to say it again, so hopefully I'll remember. Um, so we got to get uh, Vadim from Made in Brooklyn's yeah. print, screen printers on here as a guest. Yes, to, you do. He's, to, he's the best. He's the, he's the best. best. He's, he's a great best. guy. He's fun such and interesting. Dude. Such a good dude. And uh, yes. and, and that's a whole other side of the scene that you know the the, the merch side sure. of it's important. And he's so. I mean, he basically told me straight up when I ordered stuff from him that he does lots of corporate work and he yeah. overcharges the corporate customer so that he can undercharge bands. And I'm just like. No fucking a man yeah. it's not that he overcharges probably i mean he thinks he's overcharging but the corporate clients are probably like yeah that's cool whatever i've got budget yeah, correct he gets his mar he gets his margin on the corporate yeah. stuff so that he can give the bands a fair deal i mean it was cheaper for me to have him print boxes of merch and ship it to california than to find anyone here who would print it and that's just he doesn't have to do he doesn't have to do that at all no, yeah he is a beautiful, beautiful guy. A, yeah, we got to meet him at Psycho the 2017 because he was. And he out. holds court. At yeah, Psycho. he does. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Awesome. He was hanging out. He showed up with Amy and John from Year of the Cobra. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it was there with Steve. And Steve from STB. From STB. Yeah. From yep. STB. So, yep. yeah, it's fun to see the the kind of like low to mid level. Uh, uh, label luminaries floating yeah. around at Psycho. <laughs> like you see Todd, Todd Severin and Steve and uh, the guy from Prophecy all in a corner somewhere having a, having a little bit of a chat. Having a powwow. Right. Those, are the, yeah, I mean, yeah. those are the workhorses, man, that get them, get this music to the, to the masses. Yeah. I was actually sitting in the, the center bar with the dude from Prophecy and he had no idea who he, who I was. Oh, yeah. Like, and I had every idea who he was. <laughs> so it was awesome. I was like, I was like, so man, prophecy kicks ass, huh? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> it was great. It was a great he, conversation. You but, didn't yeah. have Matt, Matt Bacon right next to him, introducing you immediately. Yeah. No, man, <laughs> somewhere, somewhere else, introducing someone else to someone else. <laughs> yeah. That is what Matt does. Introductions. <laughs> So we've got uh, a couple more Matt songs. Do you... Also, also a sweetheart. But uh, yeah, oh, no, completely. Was, that was a that was a great chat uh, about Prophecy Production, which is a label that uh, it, it, one of those labels you know that like no matter what they do, it's at least going to be interesting, even if yep. you don't necessarily like it. Oh yeah, yeah. It's there's a point of view. We we keep talking about what are these labels they end up having kind of a diverse lineup where there's a real point of view from whoever's curating and mm, prof- mm. prophecies w- I would add to the list with, with Sergeant house and sacred bones, um, uh, uh, uh tank crimes, um, yep. which is, it did, it did, you know, off often another on a different side, but definitely like a, a really interesting point of view to everything that they do. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah no, I, that's a good point about, about, thinking of it as, as a curation too. Yeah, I agree with that. Definitely. All right. So you said we got a couple more. We, we have, have a couple more. Do you have time? Uh, I got time for like, actually I got time for like one or two more and then I got to go get dinner started. Okay. <laughs> All right. Then we've got, that's perfect. Cause we have two more. Perfect. All right. So uh, black, black solstice is the next one. Black solstice. The song is part of me. Um, the artwork already stands out. 
And that's cool. A little three-eyed cat. Sure. Yeah. This is that, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of graphic design studios doing this style. Yeah. Br Bronca and a few yeah, others. Yeah, it's the that's, Bronca style. Definitely. Kind of the like tone tinted, layered yeah. photograph, aged yeah. photograph style. Yeah. yeah. It is of the moment. Yeah. Yes. Not and not only due to, but in some amount due to all of the releases that Haunt and Beastmaker have done. <laughs> Just the yeah. sheer volume of uh, covers that Trevor has produced. So heavy um, groove is our purchase is, is our purpose, huh? What's the, they want Ember? Uh no, part of me. Part of me. All right, here we go. Part of me by Black Solstice. Uh blacksolstice.bandcamp.com. It's interesting. I didn't. I looking at the comments. Apparently, you guys used to be in Panamero Sundown. We reviewed that band a few times. Oh yeah. So I guess this is a new project. But does it sound similar? Some of them. No, I don't even remember. Doesn't Panamero Sundown? Oh, really? It's a little more straight up rock, sort of truck fighter Z. Oh okay. Gotcha. I always like when you when you see one of the commenters is one of the you know the kind of music blogosphere people like Fraser. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, who FDJ is? Yeah. Fraser D Jones is that his name? Yeah. Um, okay. I forget. What's his? Is he Outlaws of the Sun? No, that's uh, that's Steve. Steve, that's right. Um, yeah. Anyways, yeah. um, so. Yeah. The, these are, is another Swedish band cranking out some kind of semi vintagey sounding rock and metal. This is yeah. like on the heavier, stonier end of it. Of, from yeah, I got a little heard. classic metal vibe from that. Yeah, from that mm -hmm. guitar. Uh, cool. Uh, you it, know. It's not. Yeah, it I mean, was good. It's it's good. It's not my. Yeah. It's not something I would pick up and throw on the record player and listen to during the day. You know, um, going by forty eight seconds. Of correct. Yeah, I know exactly. Exactly. Let's see here. Fraser liked Ember the best. Let's Fraser see liked Ember. Starts. Okay. Yeah. So sweet. They've so got yeah. the heavy, heavy groove. I mean, that to me could that not be could not it. be more Swedish if it was in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, the the vocals did get like jarl adjacent there at some point yeah. to where i almost felt like i was back in 1997 ish maybe yeah. listening to Candlebox mass whatever uh <laughs> whatever band was currently jarling the Candlebox most on, mass. <laughs> on the ra on the radio uh, but no, there's uh, there's an audience for that for sure. Mm. They're probably like four super good looking blonde dudes. Probably. No, that's 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 American stereotyping right there. I, I it is. ignore me. I didn't say that. I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> you don't remember. I don't. What like. you say what? Panamero Sundown were were especially pretty. I can't recall. All right. All right. Let's blast so, through the last one. Should we blast through the last one? Let's do this. Okay. So the last one is um, kind of like we thing? mentioned at the at the top of the show. We you know. Bandcamp does all of their lists and they do articles. Um, so this is one that is an introduction to San Antonio's roots inflected alternative country scene. Um, 
So alternative country. We're going to hear uh, James Steinel. Steinel? Really? From Pleasanton, Texas. Interesting. I, I do think there's a moment here probably happening in Texas as sort of um, people from the coast hit start hitting Texas and you get like more um, like liberal and alternative influence outside of uh, Austin, which obviously has had it for a long time. Yeah. Is this, I hope, I'm really hopeful that this like back to American roots country and a, mm. away from, I would love to see the emergence of a bunch of not pop country artists to like, you know, get, get the soul of country back a little bit off the radio. So, yeah. So what, what city is this? San Antonio, you said? San Antonio. Yeah. I mean, San Antonio is one of those towns that's like red, red, but there's a really vibrant arts community there. Right. Um, and, oh, is that weirdo enclave? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, all right. So, what should we listen to? So, the song that we are going to listen to is called Die Erst. Die Erst. Die Erst. Die Erst. So, it's the first song. Yeah. So, the article was about the scene in, uh, with multiple artists, and this is just the one you grabbed out of here. Yeah. This is just the one that I grabbed. Okay. Um, it sounded Man. interesting. I think the thing that stood out to me is like, you look at this guy. Uh, you know, it's it's a very country, except that background looks like a very punk rock club, like a dive bar. Very and he's got on sort of this that. very Native American sort of shirt. Um, yeah, it's like Texas Rancher. Yeah, Texas Rancher. But then all of the song titles are German sounding. Well, <laughs> so I mean, I have I have family roots in Texas, and large portions of Texas was settled by Germans. Um, th that's why outside of Austin, you have a town called Pflugerville. Pflugerville. Yeah, PF. Yeah, there's um yeah, I, 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 his last name. There's a there's a lot of, you know, second and third generation Germans in in including at one point my family uh in in and around different parts of Texas. Hmm. All right. That's why um like the 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 pastry of uh of Texas is the the kolosh, which is Polish, I think, but they also make them in Germany. So you get these like um pastry wrapped hot dogs and like it, they have there's more uh kolosh shops than there are donut shops, I think. So you go in the morning, they have like fruit filled. It's kind of mm. like a sweet milk bread. Mm. Uh, Goodness. <sighs> ah, Texas. Well, let's hear some uh diet -er German twinged country. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. <laughs> eine kleine Auszeit nehmen, damit wir auch die Chance haben, das, was wir angeschaut haben. Frei, Vorsicht ab. Zu tragen. Finde uns entweder r.de oder 0800. That was really cool. I want to hear more of that. I felt like I was waking up on a Sunday morning, brewing my coffee. It's raining outside. Wow. Yeah, it kind of does the, uh, the, the sort of underlying current of weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It would like he'd let it flash through. A weird, yeah. Uh, like yeah. a weird noise here. Obviously, the writing um, doesn't sound like what most people associate lyrically with <laughs> country music. No, what did he, he rhyme? Uh, atrocity Cold. with viscosity. Cold viscosity. Yeah, viscosity. yeah, yeah. that was pretty rad. Uh, uh, yeah, it seems like 
someone who has not yet quite grown into his voice. Yeah. Right? I want to hear the uh, yeah, his voice I hear... is a little bit older than he is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, completely. But but may well get there. I mean, it's you know, it seems like a cool seems like a cool project from a songwriting standpoint for sure. Yeah, I want to listen to the rest. I just want to hear. So I'm going to guess something like Zug Sprites. Zug Spites Boogie is maybe something upbeat. <laughs> yeah, I want boogie. To hear, I boogie want to, should be. I mean, it should. Yeah. Be. It's interesting because his bio says that he's currently based in Austin. Austin, yeah. So that's weird that they would put him in a list of San Antonio. Yeah, because he just played the four venues in San yeah. Antonio <laughs> <laughs> to, to death. But yeah, yeah. All let's right. hear a boogie. All right. For Yeah. Well, clarinet. I was just gonna say, is that a clarinet? Yeah. Yeah, I'm leaving the low country, gonna get high. Leaving the low country, bye bye bye. And where the foreign forces go to take the hockey, I wish they'd go. Bye bye bye. But I'm gonna leave it all alone Now where when I get back home Shut off this old cell phone The music spits boogie all night long <laughs> uh, That's yeah. so, I love that Yeah. Alright, yeah <laughs> there's, there's some charm there yeah. Spitz well, and I mean the like like maybe being openly hostile to country conventions uh you know and, and standards to me gets me excited because like I love when there's collaborations between guys like this and like I was trying to say like you know heavy music collaborating with people from other genres is always a blast to me yeah. so I would I would love to see some you know, a guy like that, like hook up with a hardcore band or something, yeah. just, you know, just like really smash shit up because clearly he's, he doesn't care about the, the currently popular conventions. So speaking outside of that, yes. Christmas that's cool, the man. Cool. Guys, yeah, that's cool. That's thing. And it's nice that, I mean, Bandcamp's like writing articles. This dude's only got what a dozen, a dozen supporters so far. Yeah. It's not like he's – sometimes the articles you hit him and it's like, oh, yeah, this is a band that everybody in England knows. We just we just don't know who they are yet. But right. a lot of times it's artists that are just like completely, you know, mm -hmm. deep, deep underground still. Yeah, completely. All right. Nice. So you you need to go make dinner. We have, yeah. we, have one, we have one question for you. Well, first of all, what do you consider your hometown? Parsippany, New Jersey. Parsippany, New Jersey. I, right. I grew up half a mile up the road. Yeah, this is it, hometown. JD? Uh, so, <laughs> who is your all-time favorite hometown band? Nobody. Is there, is nobody there, is there's there. nobody? So how about just New Jersey? Oh, bon Jovi. No. Nope. <laughs> Do we even have to ask that? <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Um, torn between Solace, the Atomic Pitch Wax, and Monster Magnet. I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, Monster Magnet probably is 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 the sort of biggest of that set. Uh, Solace are probably nearest and dearest to my heart, and Atomic Bitch Wax might be the most fun on any given night. Yeah, three's good. So those those three come to my mind fastest. Um, I mean, there are a bunch more, but but yeah, I, mean, I would yeah. be perfectly happy to see that show with those three so, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely yeah the last time we tried to see monster magnet was so an, an embarrassment of riches was when we saw zeal and ardor at the bottom of the hill in san francisco mm -hmm. which is a 250 cap venue and it was like a mind exploding show like four blocks down the street at the Parkside, which is a venue that oh, literally yeah. only holds about 80 people in the room. And then they have an outdoor area where you can eat and stuff. Monster Magnet was the was the headliner of like a three or four band bill. So we just finished Zeal and Arter, walked over to the Parkside and then sat outside because we couldn't get in the room. There's right. one small door to go in, sat outside and listen to Monster Magnet. Like, yeah, <laughs> those were the days, man. Those that's, were the days. That's that's. <laughs> 
yeah that sounds awesome <laughs> yeah. and th- you know and those are the kinds of venues those are two venues that would very much be in danger of closing down without some kind of intervention yeah yeah so yeah. actually you know what i want to ask you one last question um and it's just related to you know what you do with the obelisk but like when what catches your attention like when people are sending you stuff what is it that what really, in the email yeah what in the email what catches your attention like what makes you sort of want to read one email over another or, or listen dig into another band over another hmm. um is there anything ideally no, there wouldn't be right I mean, yeah like, ideally, ideally yeah ideally you would start out from this this sort of blank slate across the board but i don't think that's true um like at least not for me uh, i don't know that's a, yeah um for me it's other people really that like, i tr- trust already like kind of co-signing you know what i mean like if i know that you listen to it then i'll probably <laughs> and you know well, oh, yeah i saw him post about that i'll open i'll open i'll check this one out yeah but i mean for me it's like a lot of it is just time yeah like, for me if i had if i had time i would, I would cover way more shit than i cover yeah. people think about their, like you know someone asked me the question like i'm sitting here choosing it's like I'm trying to do as much as I can. All of it. So much more that like I want to write about than I am on any given week. That like, you know, I'm, I don't even get to the point where um, I would be turning stuff away. You know what I mean? Like yeah, on, yeah. on its own, on its own merits. If I can, if I had time enough to do everything I wanted to cover, that would be well. That would be just. That would be just great. Just Dan. So, if that, if dory. that, if that, uh, the email came through and the album cover was in the body of the email and it was the tentacle Valkyrie. Is that a, is yeah, that that's a, probably a turnoff, a delete. Yeah, yeah. I hate to say it. I hate to say it. Ten, yeah. Tentacle Valkyrie yeah. Is, is, yeah, actually, you know what? That's true. I ha- like if, if some, if a record's coming through with cartoon tits, um, um, yeah, it, you know, I think I'm going to have to start looking at our band camp a little more closer when I'm adding these to the list. I mean, yeah. that was the first sort of thing, time we had that happen, but I don't yeah, even want to bother, gonna, to be honest. Kind of off, but, like, there are it's, good records that have... That no, have there are. Yeah. It's, it's kind true. of a bummer. Um, it's also... Like, an... Things like, you know, there are, thi- there are things like, you know, uh, blatant sexism, <laughs> uh, yeah. like the, the kind of, I don't know, casualness of that kind of kind of puts me off but like nine times out of ten that's not what's coming in yeah um, so a lot a lot of it is really just like does someone know my name is someone calling me dudes is yeah. someone being <laughs> is someone being basically polite like i get a, i get a, you know i get a lot of emails that are like hey dudes and it's like okay you know yeah. you're in a band you're sending you're sending stuff out to a bunch of people um you know i get copy, that paste, copy paste it, copy, yeah paste. no totally and that's yeah. that's fine but like you know that person doesn't care enough to know that i'm one person yeah yeah you know what i mean in some way yep so it's like so if someone is taking the time to say hey, even hey dude versus dudes yeah you know at least they know it's just one of you that's it that's gonna that's gonna pull my attention a little bit more it's not it's not a, like someone doesn't need to be sucking up or someone doesn't need to be you know, whatever, like, oh, we love, you know, we love your site, blah, blah, blah. That's great. I'm s- stoked. That's wonderful to hear if it's true. But, like, you know, uh, but you could be basically polite, I guess, is, yeah. is all. Yeah. It, it doesn't take much for me to, like, click over and listen to something for however long, 48 seconds or whatever it might be. But, yeah. you know, it's, it's like, I, I just, you know, I, I just, I don't know, be polite. Yeah, you know that band's. Well, send, if, I'm give, if I'm giving advice to, if I'm yeah. giving advice to a band and the band is looking for, to like reach out to press or something, just be polite. Be polite. Know who yeah. you're reaching out to. Be I'll, polite. I'll also yeah. say, if you haven't figured this out from listening, um, give people enough time, right? Like, mm-hmm. oh, albums coming out on Tuesday. Can you write an article? Like, yeah. it's fucking <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> can you do this yesterday? No. Yeah. I work. Yeah. I work at least twenty four hours in advance, and my shit fills up like weeks in advance. Like yeah. I know what I'm writing into March at this point. Wow. Uh, so you know, yeah, it, and and I do. I get those emails, and sometimes it's like, 
hey, this is an emergency. Can we fit this thing in? And and yeah, I do Sometimes. that. You know, for a label or somebody, you know, comes in and, and says that, or even a band I know is like, hey, can you do this? And I'm like, yeah, okay, maybe I can. Or or a lot of the time I'm like, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. I not want to happen. But, but I can't. You know, it's like, there's only so many, only so many hours in the day. Yeah. Sometimes there are weird circumstances. Like when we were doing the Kickstarters for the tribute records and like, out of nowhere you lock in a high on fire and you go like yeah. Hol- holy shit and then it's like hey uh can some <laughs> would you be willing to write up about this because it was a thing that we hadn't planned on it just right. it just to happen and it was like i don't even know if that was in a, a case where we uh yelled at you to turn something around fast i don't think we, i don't know that we did but that's a situation where i could say like hey this isn't standard operating this isn't my yeah, album stuff like stuff like that, that happened Stuff like that happens all the time. And I try and leave space and accommodate for it because it does yeah. happen. Right? Yeah. You try and plan for that as much as you can. But there are definitely times where I'm like, I can't. Yeah, but if or you're a band... I can't that day, does it matter that much that it's not the next day? And sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't. You you know, everything just kind of depends on on the day and the yeah. week. <laughs> yeah, if you're a band and you've been sitting on a record for six months and then you give it to the reviewer the review community two weeks before it's releasing you messed up yeah you know uh, you got to give my, everybody time my position continually is like the more the most the most amount of time i can get for something is mm-hmm. yeah. the better the and more amount of time I can get, the better and if you want any hope of getting in anything print you ha- you have to be oh months months, months ahead yeah it's That's like the, two months at two month lead time at least for print yeah. i would think so. at this point yeah Awesome. awesome. Well, Heather's, we'll say goodbye to your bird. Goodbye, yeah. birdie. Goodbye, bird. Yeah. Yeah. Thank and, you uh, so much for having me on. This was, this yeah, was absolutely. Absolutely. You want a cracker? Enjoy uh, making your dinner there. That actually sounds yeah, kind of fun. Turkey meatloaf coming up. Look All out, right. Bird. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, guys. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks hey. for joining us. It was great right. chatting. Nice, Bye. friend. Bye, Have JJ. a great weekend. I yeah. mean, right. Monday. All right. Woo! <sighs> Another another example of you know just all the different facets of the the industry. Yeah, and a and a thoughtful, smart, yeah, uh, person who who uses words carefully. Oh yeah, 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 yeah completely. Smart. He knows his words. <laughs> yeah, he uses them well. We could have we could have gone down a down a dark path after that album oh, cover yeah. and like been venomous. But I think it's yeah. good to just sort of indicate. Uh, lack of interest and then move along exactly so exactly. i don't know though i mean i don't know i still i'm torn it's something i thought about because like i i do want to make sure that we're not covering you know like uh you know like outwardly racist or, na- oh, yeah. or nationalist or Completely. whatever but the but the truth is uh, inside baseball if we randomly select and we get one of those there's always edit there's what always happens? editing we, we can edit if we, we need always, to if it's something really bad i think that's worth having a conversation about yeah and you know even for the band to get the feedback that you know for a certain part of the you know heavy music consuming population that's a total turnoff yeah and i don't know if they they may not even realize that or they may be well, glad they may i think there is still you know there's still a group of, of like the metal heads with their jacked up pickups and their monster sticker in the back that probably fucking love that but those guys are english does yeah. that exist in english i don't does know anyone... that's the thing that i don't understand i don't know does that exist in england it has to like it has to well, do uh, bro rock and, ev- every uh... everything here that we associate with you know weird parts of american culture ha- i think has a counter oh it totally does a counterpart and then they got some weird shit that we can't even begin to wrap our heads around yeah <laughs> yeah exactly so. I'm, I'm sure they have scenes that you know their their podcasters talk about that are that we don't know and, exist, and they probably have the same generalizations and assumptions and, about poor, us. and poor conclusions about. <laughs> probably us. Probably think we all. That's all we listen to that's, is dude, bro, rock, dude, bro, <laughs> dude, rock. bro, metal. So it was like if you didn't grow up in California, one of the one of my favorite experiences as a child was, um, you know, we didn't have the internet, we didn't have FaceTime, we weren't making friends across the across the country or the world. So your universe of friends was the people right around you. Yeah. But every once in a while, it would be like, oh, you know, my my, my best friend from high school, my mom, my best friend from high school is going to come from Illinois, and she's bringing her kids. They're going to stay with us for a week. And so there are these kids in your house yeah. from another <laughs> state. And what's the first question 
every kid that's not from California asks you when they come visit you. Oh, do you? That's not do from you have a, California. Do you have a guess? You weren't from California, but I think you're poisoned enough now that I'm, you wouldn't I'll, have the know. stereotype. I mean, anytime somebody would come stay with us, or like we would meet new people, it'd be like, "What you listening to?" Oh no! Like it was always just, "What do you like?" In Who's the your eight, favorite band in the eighties, it was, "Do you surf?" Do you surf? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone in California lives on a beach yeah. and has a surfboard in the back of their Jeep yeah. 24 hours a day. And I was like, no, I don't fucking surf. Yeah. First of all, the ocean's <laughs> an hour away. I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and put a weird suit yeah. on so I can get eaten by yeah. a fucking shark. And like, we're in Northern California. We're in Northern California. This isn't. You know, Huntington Beach. Or yeah. Thank, thank God. Yeah, seriously. Uh, so, yeah, that was it, funny. It was funny. I mean, it, it happened a bunch of times because my my parents both grew up in in the Midwest in Texas. So there'd always be some cousin or some yeah. family, friends, kids coming out and like, let's go surfing. I was like, everybody's got their stereotypes. Sorry. Don't surf. Yeah. I can always see. And it, I mean, this is sort of related, but unrelated is. I mean, even to this day, when I meet people and they find out that I'm from Utah, I can see the gears turning in their tick, head. Tick, like tick, they tick, want tick, to tick. ask and they want because they want they just associate Utah with Mormons. And so like they're so uh, and they're like trying to figure out how to ask. <laughs> You're just I, like, no, I'm not. And I never have been. Just just check for the outline of the, yeah. weir- of the weird underwear. Except I wear long underwear. <laughs> We used, I wear long boxer briefs. So. We used to used to do that for the girls. That's how you would check. That's how you and, know. And since they're not supposed to wear tight pants, it would be hard to tell something. Yeah. But but you've been in California long enough as a Mormon, you know yeah. the rules get a little loosey goosey. Yeah, so. it's true. Well, there's a big difference. There yeah. is like growing up in Utah. There are Utah Mormons and there are California Mormons, yeah, and then there are everyone else Mormons. Yeah, and uh, the Utah Mormons are definitely a lot different than everywhere else. So yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's. It, I think that was a, that was a great conversation. It's it's always nice to hear you know from from people that are doing similar things um, and just supporting the scene. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, so if you uh, if you've never read JJ's writing before, never been to the obelisk, go check it out. Yep. Yeah, it's, obelisk uh, dot net. The uh, obelisk. The obelisk dot net. Yeah, it's uh it's a really cool site. She when there are shows, he does show reviews. He takes uh, photos at lots of shows. Um, uh, one thing that we didn't talk about that I actually wanted to ask him about was, um, there is a record label, um, that it's run by a Jad Schickler, who is also part of Magnetic oh, yeah. Eye called Blues Funeral. Blues Funeral. And it's like a subscription. It's like a curated subscription. You sign up for a year and he picks the bands and they record exclusive records for him. When you say him, do you mean Jad? For Jad, okay. yeah. So Jad's running. It's not associated with Magnetic right. Eye. Oh, okay. And then he does this really like incredible packaging. It's like really special collector level versions oh, wow. of everything. And JJ writes the liner notes for all the releases. Oh, nice. He writes really bitchin' liner notes because he just goes so deep. And so he he asked a question on Facebook the other day, like, hey, um, you know, it's year two of uh, Blues Funeral is coming up. Those liner notes are a lot of work. Does anybody even read them? And luckily, the feedback was like, oh, man, they're so great. It's my favorite. You know, it's one of my favorite parts of the releases. Awesome. And definitely, you know, definitely keep doing it. So hopefully uh, maybe you got a little pay bump for for uh, all of the demand for nice. him to keep doing those liner notes because he's he doesn't say anything halfway and i don't think he writes anything halfway so that's awesome well, six listens six he admitted he doesn't always get to six but yeah. that's ambitious man so. and if you send him uh music just say hey jj hey jj <laughs> not <laughs> hey dudes yeah <laughs> or bros yeah <laughs> hey jj <laughs> we should have if we can talk leanne into coming on leanne ridgeway sometime I would love to have a PR person. Yeah. At some point. Yeah. And completely. Talk about that. And then we're and then, you know, dreaming about future bookings, get Aaron Gray or Nate Carson or mm-hmm. someone who's a tour booker. Oh yeah. Um, come on to talk about that because that's not, you know, most of you guys are booking your own tours. If you're in a band, um, you may be able to get to the next level where you get a 
get a tour booker, um, but you're going to deal with them no matter what, mm-hmm. because the bookers are usually responsible for picking support bands um, for big enough tours. Like you don't, ju- you either have to, the booker has to recommend you or the band themselves in some cases or their management. So you're going to, you're going to be around these people and they have influence over yeah. whether you get shows or not and which ones you, oh, and, 100%. and which ones you get. So yeah, completely, completely. And they, they see a completely different side of the business. Um, and they have, and they're obviously suffering because if, if your job was 100% booking tours, it's been a pretty quiet year for you. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, um, they're also really in touch with the venues because their ability to book is really about the networking they've done with the venues all over the country Completely. or, or all over the world if they're booking yeah. globally. So. You know who plays really good venues? Who? Corn. They do. They Only get, the best. They get all the best venues. They get, well, f- fuck, man, this summer it's probably going to be that hot-ass st- outside state fair circuit for, <laughs> for them, don't you think? Yeah, completely. And then, fi- and then fi- Fieldy can open the for them. State fair circuit. Fieldy solo opens for corn at, yeah. at a state fair near you. <laughs> On that note, yeah. Thanks. Actually, I wanted to do one one oh. really quick thing because, oh. uh, gotcha. you know, kind of talking about just everybody trying to promote bands and 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 uh, you know turn the world onto new music. Um, I wanted to just give a shout out because uh, there was a, a a podcast called the Doom Tomb podcast. Oh, yeah. Chris, that Chris does, yeah. yeah, and he gave us a shout out last week, and we got a bunch of new followers and some listeners, and so just wanted to you know tell other tell other people that go check out other podcasts. Yeah, like you know we're all just trying to do the same thing. We're not in competition with one another. We just want to turn you on to new bands. No, and I might we should have Chris on because I actually when we played in Arizona, Chris came to the show. Oh, nice. Um, super nice guy. Yeah. Um, and uh, and talked to him for a while, and have been meaning to like do an interview at some point with him so maybe we'll do a little a little pod a little pod swap that'd be awesome yeah, yeah he, so he's people super, go check out doom tomb if you and if you want to know you know he's he's a relentless supporter of the scene uh, around phoenix and actually i just got a, a you know a year memory notification from our our dudes in uh, old-fashioned assassin kyle uh, reminding me that they put on a festival oh. and it was chris and Oh, nice. uh, from Doom Tomb and Kyle and some other folks, um, like February twentieth last year. Oh, really? That was the like the last the last the thing. last thing oh, that wow. happened. Yeah, That's no. Crazy. Quest play a bunch of bands played, um, and they they just got through their fest, and then it was like <laughs> every, shut everything down. Everything's closed. Yeah. Nice. So, all right. Well, all right. Thanks again. This has been another episode, episode of. of- Blind submissions. submissions. Are we out? We out. We out. Thanks for joining us for another week of Blind Submissions. See episode description for links to all artists discussed in this episode and visit their sites to support them directly by buying music and merch. Share links to the podcast or YouTube videos with your friends, especially if they're in bands. Bands. If you want us to listen to your music on a future episode, please submit one song to blindsub at gmail.com. That is blindsub, B-L-Y-N-D-S-U-B at gmail.com. Bandcamp links preferred, but not required. Find us on social media at Blind Submissions. Full video episodes are available on our YouTube. Remember, we go in blind so you don't have to. Blind Submissions.